We talked about this, remember this pawn on d5 way back, the first game we looked at. I mean, Diarov uh, was black against Wang Yue, and mm. am I saying that remotely correctly, by the way? I think I'm like... It, Wang Yue, I... oh yeah, you're killing it, your pronunciation, pronunciation, pronunciation is 10 out of 10, unlike my English pr English pronunciation. Oh boy, that was, that was really laborious, <laughs> that, that, that sentence. I was just trying to prove my point as I was... Uh, <sighs> It's, it's fine. Anglosh is a hard link. Oh, I have a chair. Oh, there we go. Alexandra's back. Okay, cool. Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm I'm Levy Rosman and I'm joined by Alexandra Botez and we'll be continuing the Pro Chess League Battle Royale fun with the Pacific Division. Are you excited, yeah. Alexandra? I'm super excited. We're here for the last Battle Royale ever and I get to be here with an amazing co-commentator. Hi everyone. <laughs> WFM Bigfoot. I think you're confusing me, but that's okay. Core one ad blitz. We just saw, so the, the amazing thing about this week, everybody, that makes it slightly different than the normal Battle Royale, let's just remind what the format is. In a standard Battle Royale, you've got eight teams in, in all mixed up, playing against each other. All teams play, all teams on their respective boards. What makes this week interesting is two things. Number one, it's interdivision, or is that right? No, it's intradivision. Oh, That's there the right you word. go. It's intradivision, so all teams within the same division. And there's more at stake. So if you win, you get 30 points. And the really super, super incredible people of the graphics team, JT Cannon, put together this beautiful scoreboard we're going to be using. Um, and this scoreboard live updates the playoff seedings. So It does. So you see that safe green zone with the playoffs? The teams today are going to be battling it out to see who makes it to the playoffs to be able to qualify potentially for the finals. So super exciting. We're going to be seeing it update live in this crazy battle royale format. Nice way to end off before the playoffs, don't you think, Levy? Yeah, we just saw some crazy plot twists in the Atlantic division. If you missed that, either, I don't know, go watch again or I've canceled the rest of your plans and hang with us. We can recap it for you briefly, but basically... Yeah, yeah. Can't text your friend, say, yo, Levy and Alexandra asked me to hang out. Sorry, I'll see you tomorrow. It's fine. I will, we'll take full responsibility. <laughs> so games will theoretically begin uh, right about now, 
And it's going to be seven rounds because there's eight teams, seven rounds. Hope that makes it clear you can't play against yourself. Uh, why don't we take a look at our giant scoreboard? So this scoreboard shows all of the matchups. It's beautiful. And I just need to say, whoever made this, you're amazing. Uh, Alexandra, we just had well, a conversation. You're giving a lot of compliments today. Can I get one too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, come on. So you're making me feel left out here. You and That's I, right. you and I, before the stream started, were talking briefly about the Reykjavik Open. Speaking of super tournaments, look at that board one round robin. Naraditsky, Mamit Yarov, Saranana, Kumura, Kerala, Zhang, Brown, and Wang Yue. I mean, I mean, it is the battle royale. They're going to put their top gunners out. They are trying to get the most points, qualify for the playoffs. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I want to say that Hikaru wins, but you just never know uh, in in these kinds of formats, like what's going to happen. So, I, I don't know. We might see Jeffrey Zhang storm up into the top seed with the Dallas Destiny. Chengdu, obviously, always a favorite. So, um, lots to look forward to. Lots to look forward to. Uh, I, I actually made an interesting observation, I think, when I was doing the Marshall stream. Okay. And that was the fact that in this division, on the top two boards, there is one I am. Everyone else is a Grandmaster. So... Michael Brown. Somebody okay. said Michael Brown. Yeah, but Michael Brown just got his third GM norm, so... Okay, so not him. Yeah, so... Is there anybody in particular you're excited to see play today? I'm excited about... I'm excited about Jeffrey Zhang. That's that because he's led his team throughout the season with great results. He's had very, very good performances on board one against all the traditional 2750 plus players. And today, really, his I'm not sure of the color situation, meaning who he's playing with white and with black, but I'm excited to see how he does against Sarana, who he probably will be playing, you know, throughout his career as they're both top juniors. Mamidyarov, Naraditsky. Naraditsky, obviously not 27, but... Uh... All right. Well, Daniel Naraditsky really likes playing other players in his rating range. So I think even though he's been doing really well in the regular season, he'll be doing amazing playing just the first sports today. And I'm not just saying that because he's, he's from the SF team. Yeah, shout out to the Mechanics Institute. Um, all right, so we have our big Pacific Division thingy here. We're going to call it a thingy. It's going to live update based on... Uh, all the games finishing. So just looking at this, it it seems as though the top two are locks. Uh, Chengdu and Dallas are locks for the playoffs. Now, we can expect them to have top four finishes, so probably they are locks for the top two seeds. However, Minnesota can play the role of spoiler, as they are a handful of points away from Dallas. Australia needs to, however, hang on to their fourth place spot, not give it up to the likes of San Jose and Mechanics, and really, Alexandra, the hidden storyline, can the San Diego Surfers avoid relegation with a first place finish? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I know that it's our job as commentators to hype things up, but sometimes you got to be a little practical. San Diego Surfers, you guys are from a nice city. There's the beach there you can enjoy after, but just do your best today. Yeah, just do your best, guys. Maybe, maybe make it to the three digits. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, reasonable goals. It's like a, um, it's like a just, just a, just a toddler who can't quite get walking. You know, just, <laughs> just got to hold, oh, gotta okay. do their best. They've been holding back. Apparently, Noda is saying that they're gonna crush it this time. But so. that's wow, okay. do I look like Josh Koscheck? I hope I don't have the personality of Josh Koscheck. Uh, but these are highlights, so don't worry. This is not, this is not my permanent hairstyle. Right, uh, you're going to go bright pink next, right? Yes. Okay, if the San Diego Surfers get first, then we're both dyeing our hair bright pink. That seems reasonable. Oh, okay. There maybe you go. I'll, I'll Maybe I'll pierce my ear. Pier pierce your ear? No, probably not. I'm terrified of needles. Uh, that's mm -hmm. probably the reason I, I would never get a tattoo, no matter what goal I hit on my channel, but maybe not. Never say never. Right. Life is long. And uh, Mr. Graypon saying Naka's team is about to relegate. That's hard. Well, they still have a chance to make it in the top six. So the Seattle Sluggers are definitely going to be fighting very hard to overtake the SF mechanics. Um, it's possible. Not likely, but possible. Well, you also have to remember that 
Oh, and speaking of which, some games have started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there the we go. The first game. game. Of the day. Wang Yuan, Mami Darov. This is going to be fun. Yes. Um, notes it off. Send Levy syringe emoji when he. I don't bug you. <laughs> All right, let's let's get the games up. Here All we right. Go. Wow. I don't bug you. Oh, and speaking of which, Rob, uh, it's uh, oh yeah, Rob asked me a question about. Uh, internet in New York, which which is a complicated subject. You don't talk politics and you don't talk uh, internet service providers in New York City. Oh, yeah. Robert asked me the same question. I guess we're just, you know, one person in his mass email list over there. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're, I'm working on it. I was telling Hess how my internet is pretty bad, so I'm not the best person to take advice from. But hopefully it's, it's a better case for you. Anyway. Well, yeah. We could just talk about the internet the whole time. I mean, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. No, it's have... fine. I'm sorry. So but before we dig into the game, I will just remind everyone that the time control is faster than the usual divisional matches in that it's two minutes with two second increment instead of 15. So the games are going to be starting much faster. So we're going to be hopping on a little bit more than usual. Bear with us. Let us know if there's any game you want us to cover and we will be there. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to do our best. I hope. All uh, right. Personally, you know, I talk about this a lot when I when I when I do this coverage. I would like to focus on people whose username is their name, as opposed to like attack to make you. Cheese. But I know, yeah, as opposed to soggy cheese, like something like soggy cheese. So our first matchup is super intriguing. Chengdu hackers, two top players on the top board. So we can we can hang here for a bit. All right. Um, um, so we have a King's Indian style position here where white is playing D5 really early on. Um, what do you think about Wang Yue's choice to push D5 right away instead of saying something like standard Bishop, Bishop F4. F4, standard movie hour, Queen C2? D5 is pretty much the way you take advantage of black having not pushed D5 themselves mm -hmm. in this position. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you ever look up what the name of this opening is, it doesn't quite exist. It's like the Indian's defense, but it's a yeah. fusion. It's kings and queens and Nimzo and everything. Right. It you reminds push... me of what I play in Bullet when I want some type of opening that I can play almost no matter what my opponent does. Yeah. But of course, that's not the case. Mama Jarov knows what he's doing. Um... <laughs> I mean, I, I think you and Mama Jarov would have a pretty, pretty fair bullet battle. Um... Yeah, I, I might have to give him some advantage, but that's okay. So, but... You know, there, there's positives and negatives with this trade. Like, for the good, white has more space, prevents black from developing easily with knight c6, and mm -hmm. d6, knight d7 is not really the way you'd like to develop because you weaken your light squares so much, and white can always play knight d4, knight c6, which also is a benefit of trading on d5. Mm -hmm. But black gets the active rook, black can play yep. knight a6, knight c5, and I mean, Mamidyarov would not voluntarily take this position if he wasn't aware of the plans, so... Right. And the other thing he'll be able to take advantage of here is his um, dark squared bishop being on the long diagonal, helping control the center. He is using his rook and his knight to try to make e4 a lot more difficult here to kind of make it difficult for white to get a strong center despite that pawn already being in d5 here, on d5. And so we see rook c1. I mean, white's play is very easy. Uh, it's the kind of position where, all right, there we go. The first instigating move. This is yes. what Mamidyarov is known for, picking the yes, fight. Yes, he's shaking it up. Um, so, knight e4 is, uh, in in a perfect world, black would chop on c3 uh, and leave white with a pawn there. So now the rook is blocked, which you just put on c1, and I'll just put a knight on c5. And because your pawns are so advanced, which is a negative of white's setup, you can't go backwards with the pawns. So my my pieces will just kind of surround your pawns and be like, Hey, I think you wandered to the wrong part of town. Right. Um, and what do you think of Wang Yue considering taking the knight here? How would you describe the rook being stuck on e4 after this? Because obviously his rook looks developed, but it's Whoa. also deep into enemy territory. Interesting. So this is this is a really interesting moment. Uh, I just said interesting two times. I'm like I'm like well, every. It's, it's especially interesting. So it's okay. You have a good reason to chat. Yes. Forgives you. It's especially interesting. Uh, you would think that putting a rook kind of in the thick of things here, where it can be targeted by so many different pieces, uh, is not the best way for black to play the position. 
and yeah. probably you would be correct because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you saw one of your students playing this, you would give him a stern look and say, we're talking after the game. Yeah, I'd be like, listen, bud, I mean, I mean, my <laughs> students would probably play like knight g5, rook takes bishop, okay? Because they thought that the bishop wasn't protected. Um, <laughs> so d6 is very, very critical. I mean, the thing is that he blitzed this move. So he, he must have a feel for his position. Rather than entering all the calculation with bishop takes b2, he kind of understands that this is a very big issue for black. And if black is to, let's say, play pawn takes d6, then structurally he's going to be worse in pretty much all the endgames with this yep. really, really bad pawn on d7. Furthermore, right. I'm pretty sure after c takes d6, knight d2 or knight g5, I guess not knight g5 because then rook d4 would hit the queen, so you would play knight d2. Okay, but we have c6. And queen d2. Well, what are your thoughts on that b7, bishop? Um, if you would have asked me a move ago, it would have been a little bit different. So obviously the bishop is temporarily blocked by the c6 pawn, but it will be pretty easy to free up the bishop, so it's not as bad as it looks. His c pawn will be able to move. Um, it's just a temporary trade-off for trying to improve and keep a better pawn structure. So I think it's actually okay. So, yeah, queen f6. It seems as though he can just kind of like leave his light scored bishop and knight on a6 and just say, look, you didn't do anything about my rook on e4, so. Right. Um, I mean, his pieces aren't active. His minor pieces, the bishop and the knight, but his rooks are already getting pretty active. Not f4, Bishop. Okay, h6, h4. Very nice. By the way, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. 11 true Vlad. Yes, and for everybody who's saying hi in chat, welcome to you guys as well. LDS Jedi Knight, Halvard, Moscat, Kasparov, Wannabe, true Vlad. Um, I know Face Chess was here earlier as well, Hop in the DeLorean. I'd say hello to everybody, but then we are going to be missing the moves. So I will stop there. If I miss your name, just know that I see you in the chat and we're happy you're here. Yeah, I don't really I don't really see you or, or yeah. wanna see you. Levy's no, not I... happy you're here. Levy is here for the chess, because that's what he does best. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I, I probably do chess commentary introductions poorly. I'm not gonna lie. Uh Okay. So this excursion with the, with with the white pawn to d6. Remember, we we mentioned this. This is like a loss of time. Uh, it's only going to be good if you can then build your pieces around such an advanced pawn. But the pawns just kind of wandered off here into the forest, and right. okay, now he's playing g4. This doesn't feel right. Something this feels is, off. This is weird because he's playing g4, and there's no good follow up to try to break up. Black's kingside pawns here. I think his king looks pretty safe. Do you see anything white could do after g4 that is intimidating? I mean, if they were playing over the board, you could probably pick up the g pawn and just throw it at the king, but it's a pretty <laughs> solid success rate. It's like down the line, it's like, you know, darts. But yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, g5 doesn't. I mean, okay, like, yeah, you can play g5, but I guess the queen is going to move. Really, right. the question is how is. Mamidyarov is now getting the upper hand, but how? Yeah. Like, what is next? Well, the pieces, the only piece left that is awkward in Mamudarov's position knight. is the knight on a6. Yeah. Um, obviously, his pawn on d7 is not ideal, but he can't improve that. So when you have problems in your life, you focus on what you can actually fix. That's the same thing he's going to do. So uh, I'm guessing he's going to try to move his knight somewhere to maybe not before right away, but try to improve the position of his knight. Yeah, knight before looks natural. Yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, just knight before. Of course, you have to start calculating. You do have to start calculating moves like uh, g5, as you said. But again, like, right. what, what are, what are we, I feel like playing g4, g5 is like running up a slide. Like, maybe you'll make it to the top. There's a very high chance someone's going to get there, slide straight down, and knock you, right? So, I don't really know what, this is first analogy of the show, g4, right, g5. Right, right. I uh, just, just had a flashback to very frustrating moments in my childhood, trying to run up that slide, never making it up. Yeah, um, I'm really sorry. Oh, we should quickly look at Hikaru's game as well. Okay. Because that's getting to... a little crazy, and of course, chat was asking. All right, you guys want to look at Hikaru? I was going to try to keep it like, you know, it's the Battle Royale. We could do whatever we want. There's a hundred of us. We're landing on a giant eye. Wait a second, it's the wrong Battle Royale. Um, <laughs> we're just going to jump around here. Games and, and, and games and... 
in more games. Yeah. And well, but- I mean, Hikaru has all the golden weapons here, and Michael Brown has been trying to build, but he's going to get shot down. It's just a matter of time if we were making the battle royale analogy. Okay, got it. Uh, so I'm. Yeah. Alexandra, I'm going to scroll back to the opening, okay? I haven't clicked Before on it yet. Before it went wrong? Okay. No, no, no. no. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to the opening. I'm going to make a bet with you. Yes. Hikaru's first two moves were either... No, it, I'm just going to guess. Knight F3 and then B3. That's my prediction. Well, did you see the name of the opening? Oh, no. I suppose that would have been cheating. I didn't see the name of the opening. I just... That's what Hikaru does. He just plays Knight F3 and B3. Let's go back to the beginning. Here's a moment of truth. There it is. Now, now, don't disappoint me, my man. Yes! He did it. He did, he did it. it. I, I was there. Okay, but, oh. like, how about move 5, Alexandra, knight h4? <laughs> he really likes his bishop. He really does. Uh, he values the bishops. Much like computer engines, Hikaru is basically a computer engine inside of a human, so we always try to trade off the bishops, and that's what he went for. Although, of course, Michael Brown was a little bit careful, too, so Hikaru just kept chasing his bishop. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a pretty standard kind of thing. If if yeah. Black develops the bishop to a five so quickly, if Black isn't careful and doesn't play h six, you can snag up the bishop. But having said that, Hikaru is not super concerned about uh, traditional opening advantages per se. I mean, for him, if he gets a playable position, there's a very high chance he offend. He wow, I was about to say offends. I don't even know why. Why did that word defeats you offends you? What? Because he offends and defeats his opponents. It's totally acceptable. I you know, see where you're going with it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Have you seen him cackle when he wins Arena Kings? That's some scary stuff. Oh, no. I, ha I was trying to say offends them because he beats them so bad. But maybe you're right. And he also giggles. So that's fine. Well, it's, it makes like, him... it's like Joker laughter. It's not giggling. He might be giggling can, can now. You, can, you show, can you demonstrate the Joker laugh just so we understand? I don't. I don't think we're ready. I think it's too early in the Royale. Can okay, I do it like halfway through? You're right. I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that. Yeah, but I will. I will. I promise, chat. We will. It's just like, you know, we got to start off with high energy, professional. Yeah. Levy, you know I'm a fan of your impressions. That's the only reason. But let's keep looking here. So I'm guessing you're at the final position of Hikaru and Michael Brown's game. Yep. Okay, cool. So it looks like... Hikaru is trying to get some attack. He was putting pressure on g7. Black just blocked the queen now. How can Hikaru try to take advantage of Black's vulnerable kingside position here? King I, think position. I think queen h2 is a great start. Obviously, in a, in a dream situation, you play queen h8, and I mean, you're just completely winning. Every, every one of white's pieces is lined up perfectly, and this is... Uh, this position is really a great example of, of how bishops can be superior to knights uh, because the bishop on b2 is just a laser beam through the knight on f6. The knight on f6 is left defending the king and everything mm -hmm. is vulnerable. But Michael Brown playing very cold-blooded here. Queen takes e3, grabbing a pawn, not scared, and wow, forcing bishop c1. Uh, what are the complications that can arise? So I guess he wasn't scared of queen h8 moving the king. Where does the queen go now? Well... Now that Michael Brown was able to grab a pawn, I imagine he wants to trade off the queens, right? Because if he can trade off the queens, he can survive in the end here. Yeah. Um, Back up. Maybe, maybe there was something wrong. Like, like uh, maybe Bishop C one was not was not the best. Not ideal. But what do you do here? It's it's really not easy to to figure out. Right. A, a way to um, play. I was looking at Queen D six. Actually, yeah, that looks super natural. Because it, it looks like a natural attacking move, but maybe there was not enough follow up there. Um, Interesting. Okay. Because there's rook g1, so maybe black would be able to trade off the rooks. Oh, like rook g1 or something. Right. Wow, really? It's amazing. Every square is now covered by the knights. Remember all that talk? The bishops are better than the knights? Clearly not. Knights can defend in curious ways. Um, so let's let let's back up to the position and uh, um, wow michael bro wow i don't know he's, he's playing this well so far um we got to give him some credit for defending this position i still feel uncomfortable for his king especially because the dark squares are so weak and hikaru has the open d file he has the bishop pair obviously his queen is cornering his king he's still up a pawn but i i don't think he has an easy plan with it right he can't just 
try to promote that G pawn into a queen and not worry about his king side. Yeah, I agree with you, especially because there's always the looming threat of trading the rooks. If you can get the rooks off the board, obviously black has very, very little to worry about, uh, at least compared to before. So, right. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's not... Ooh, and now knight e4. Knight 94, c3 coming. going for queen c3. Okay, Michael is uh, not holding back here. <laughs> A queen f7. What's the problem with a move like king b8? Is king b8 crazy? Okay, king b8 is going to the corner. All right. Um, how can you defend c3? Obviously, you can keep black in checks here, but after king a7, oh, you got bishop e3. So never mind, no king a7. Yeah, king a7, bishop e3 just seems a little bit too risky, right? Wait, so is, is Hikaru maybe forcing a perpetual here? Yeah, maybe. Oh, my. Oh, he plays oh. queen e8, slight, slight change of plans. King c7, queen d7, king b6, bishop e3, king a5? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that last one. Okay, can you repeat that again? Yeah, so my what I was saying was uh, queen d7, king b6, bishop e3, king a5. But that uh, just looks a little bit too insane for my liking. Don't put a king on a5, just don't do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess he's fine, and I guess if you play rook d7, king b6... Right, so let's look at that. Rook d7, bringing in another piece. Does that actually work here? Oh, he just played bishop b2. Okay, never mind. Um, but black can now trade off white's bishop pair, which is one of his big advantages, especially since it's the dark squared bishop and black's king is vulnerable on the dark square. So that is good news for Michael Brown. We also, just quickly to jump around everybody, because games are going to be finishing left and right, we want to keep you updated. So this is how our scoreboard works. We have had a couple of decisive results. So uh, Jeffrey Zhang and Fidel Corral as the boards won for Dallas and Minnesota, respectively. They made a draw. And so now this gets added to this first column, the small column. Each team has now a half a point. Because of the logic of the of the scoring bracket, it now thinks that Dallas and Minnesota have tied for second place. Uh, so yeah, that... it's just because the other teams haven't gotten any points yet. Yes. So it will be fixed soon. Do not worry. Um, the standings updating live make it more fun because it adds to the confusion, and everybody's having more fun when they're a little bit confused, right, Levy? Yes, confusion is usually the key to success or failure, but both of those at least are a decisive result, unlike a draw in fifteen moves. So, right. so at least it's the chess excitement we know and love. The board four of the surfers defeated the board four of the sluggers, who apparently is a 1200. That's probably just not accurate, but yeah, it's probably not a good idea to field a 1200 ELO player on board four. <laughs> uh, my roommate is trying to FaceTime me. I'm just going to make sure it's not an emergency. <laughs> yeah, uh, I also get FaceTimed because people want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I this mean, is... your roommates probably do. I think this is one of the first time my roommates has tried to call me. Um, she's probably calling to say, wow, these games are really exciting. I can't get wait to get home and watch it in the background. Yeah, that's usually my, my spiel, is that people watch these streams if I ever do them in the background because they don't understand chess. But neither do we, so let's keep talking about it. All right, so, so are we back at Wang Yue's game? Yeah, Mr. Mimidyarov getting a good end game, but only having 50 seconds to convert it. Ooh, so Mamidyarov up a pawn. White has two double pawn in exchange here. Um, Levy, I noticed that Mamidyarov's king is on the queen side where he's trying to help his two pass pawns promote. Do you think that's enough for him to force a win? It's really like a like a tough question. Do you move your king forward toward the middle? Do you move it backward toward the pawn? Do you move it backward toward what he just did? I guess toward... And maybe now he'll play king b6, get a little bit closer to the queen side. I don't know. c4, c3 looks good. It's so tough. I highly doubt you bring your king toward the pawn, which he didn't do. So, you know, he's... <laughs> we're on the same page. Uh, but it's, it, it's... It's definitely not simple to calculate with this little time. He definitely wishes he played the middle game a bit faster. This is the worst. Pawn races with 30 seconds on the clock, high pressure situation. Right. It's very difficult to calculate what happens after king takes g6, 
F5, F6, F7, F8, and trying to see who gets mm -hmm. the pawns faster, especially in time pressure like this where you always have to take into account uh, intermissos or some in move that's in between that you may not have taken into account originally. That's so fascinating, by the way. He just played F3. Yeah, that was kind of a weird move. It's, I guess, just a waiting move, like trying to put more pressure on... Because he can't take, of course, because F4 is hanging. Mm -hmm. So it might have been trying to put Mami Diarov into like, some sort of Zugzwang, but... Hikaru did draw, by the way. So Hikaru okay. did draw his game. Well, um, I like what he's doing. So um, Mami Diarov is keeping White's King's tied to the F4 pawn so that he can't get any counterplay on the king side. And he's going to just try and promote his pawns. Without wow, there's so many games. So, so many games ending at the same time, sorry. No, this looks like it's winning for Mami Jarov. He's just going to be able to keep pushing his pawns, and White has no counterplay. He just completely took away his yep. counterplay. That was so beautiful. C3, yeah, that was that was super, super impressive. This is a great end game to show students. If any of you have students that are like 1,600, because uh, those are the students where you go, all right, today we're going to do end game. Ooh, I don't even make it past move 15. So Mami Diarov gets a go. win for his team. Okay. Uh, who else is for Chengdu? I believe, uh, f here we go. I'm watching Lee D versus, that's XWWZZZ versus Aliskerov. Thank you for pointing out that username. How couldn't I have guessed that XWW that was, Lee D. was Lee D? Yep. Yeah. Lee D is winning as a winning minor piece endgame. Mm -hmm. Chengdu probably going to gain back a point here after losing one. My well, of winning with black is great, by the it'd way. It'd be fun to see um, Aleskarov sack his knight somehow for that b5 pawn and force um, Lee D to win with a bishop and a knight. But it, it looks like he might be able to hold here. Or, I mean, he has some counterplay, at least. Wow, for the moment, everybody, look at this. For the moment, just for the moment, with this current seating, Chengdu 188, Minnesota 187, and then 186 and a half for the next two teams. This is why this uh, this scoreboard is so fun because it it just bounces around like crazy. The teams are literally first to fourth is separated by two and a half points. That's amazing. I've never seen that. Like what? <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. And yes, chat, we do read the chat. We see it. We try to reply as often as we can while also catching the action here on the chess boards. Yeah. Um, chat, let us know who you're cheering for today. What team would you be most excited about to see in the final four? Let us know. We're excited as well. I think my I'd professional be opinion to be any Bay Area team in the top four. Any Bay Area team? Yep. What is considered Bay Area? Is that San Jose and San Francisco? Oh, okay, okay. They're close. I mean, San Jose is closer. Mechanics need to have like a second first place finish, probably. Right. Uh... Um, so, do you think? Fike can do anything to hold a draw here. What would his best chance strategy be? Well, he shouldn't trade his knight. This is my expert opinion. Because if he trades the knight, uh, even though white only has one pawn left, black will never touch it because the king will plant itself on c6 and this king will go to d8 and it will simply be a zugzwang. We're going to see a bishop leaving a king with no moves and you're going to get this kind of position. So... I played Lee D, I think yesterday, in some bullet or two days ago. He is he is good and his endgame technique is good. And I, I learned that in bullet, which is you know knight b7 now, I think, or knight e6. What's the right way to win the pawn? So knight b7. Mm -hmm. Uh now he takes. Okay, now if he's really cold blooded, he's just gonna give away the pawn, but he's not gonna do that. Um, no, he he'll just get into the easier conversion here, which will be just being able to promote the pawn, he can distract. Yeah, knight c4 Four. or bishop c8. I guess that works as well. And bishop um, a6. Bishop a6 is his idea, I guess. Or now he plays. Yeah, it. now oh, he what? plays knight c4. Interesting. Uh, knight takes and bishop b7 and gg. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so let's hop on quickly to the other games since they're oh. very close to finishing. Penguin and Razvan. Look at this. Look at this time scramble. Andrew Tang is down a piece and a pawn, but mate on h6. Razvan. Queen h5, king f6. Is there mate? There's no mate. Well. <laughs> there must yeah, be okay. mate. Rook h6. It, it looks like there should be mate, but they're both trying very hard not to flag. Go, little king, run. Run, run, run. Oh, okay, it's ladder. Seven, block it. Queen c4. <sighs> That's it. It's got to be a win. There's got to be a win. Queen b3. Queen b6 and rook h8. Oh, he missed it. Queen b6, rook h8 was winning. 
Queen B6. Yeah. Nice. That's game. Wow, that's that's so depressing. He's going to lose his queen. But that was a very nice tactic. If you guys didn't save that game, you should. Nicely done. Wow. Naraditsky. Naraditsky Sarana. Let's hop to this game. I'm oh, sorry, I'm I'm interrupting. There's just No, you should. There's <laughs> little time. You're doing your job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Sarana, two pawns against a bishop here. Um this is a hard position to defend. It's like rook and bishop, but with pawns, right? So right. it's do the pawns get in the way? Do they... I mean, he just lost his pawn, and is black going to be able to get that last H pawn? Oh, I, I don't think know. it would be quite difficult here. Yeah, Rook and Bishop King is... is so close to the H pawn. So tricky. So tricky. Uh, are those numbers right? Minnesota is in first, but you guys have to remember, it's only one round so far. So for now, Minnesota wins. They get 30 points. And that would mean that is this is he losing somehow here? This is incredible. Like I'm trying to figure that out as well. I love his defense of rook h6. Obviously, black cannot trade off here. Um, but it looks like that pawn is a goner now. So this should be bishop and rook are normally wins because the bishop is a piece that has a lot more control as opposed to knight and rook end games. Yeah, well, I mean, with, with perfect defense and from the correct starting position, you know, if you start, like, in the middle of the board, you should you should be able to defend it. I, I defended it once, but my opponent wasn't a time trouble. I mean, so I just basically, like, shuffled pieces, and yeah. he offered me a draw after 15 moves. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that sounds like an ideal way to win. Um, okay, it looks like um, Serana is doing a good job at holding the draw here. Yeah, he's using the second rank defense. Um, yeah, so MC is anyway. saying it's technically a draw, but always a win in blitz. Very hard to defend. Um, of course, if somebody can defend it, it'll probably be one of these super good blitz playing grandmasters. Yeah, and then you always have stalemating tricks uh, mm -hmm. where if the king and the bishop actually surround you, you can like give a check. And mm -hmm. then if the bishop takes, the king will be stuck on e1. It's kind of common. But again, it, it, it's really tricky. Like one wrong move... Oh, well, here, rook d3 would be a draw. Rook d3. Oh, it is a draw, I think. On bishop a4, rook b4. Yeah, it's a draw. He blundered. Uh, wait, why can... Oh, now he can just take yeah, on g6. Yeah. yeah. Just and what, rook e6 didn't work? Why? Uh, if we back up... Rook e6 defending the bishop. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't even know which side of the board we were on anymore, so I said rook d3. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, we I was assuming side. you meant rook e6, though. Yeah, so. rook just, just rook e7 trades the rooks. Right, there you go. So. Okay, nice job. Good draw. Good fight. Uh, why don't we check the big scoreboard? I think we should do this after every round. So what happened? Lee D got a win, uh, which we which we saw ultimately in that endgame. Andrew Tang defeated Razvan. Craig Hilby, the board three for the surfers, drew the board three of Seattle. That's Georgi Markvillashvili. And any upsets? John Bartholomew got a win from Minnesota. He's one of the highest rated board fours. They need him to score big. And I think his biggest matchup of the day is going to be against Dallas's board four, uh, the WGM from China, who is a superstar and is actually like 2440 or something. So Right. So the San Jose hackers have inched closer to the Australia kangaroos. That is going to be one of the biggest things to keep an eye on to see if the San Jose hackers are over, able to overtake the S Australia Kangaroos to get into the playoffs. Yes, yeah, San Jose is very. <laughs> Sorry, it's ne never a dull day doing commentary with Alexandra. <laughs> oh God, I spilled water. Um, but it's okay. One second, it's just water. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Keyboard, it's on the floor, so it's gonna dry. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pro hosts. Ah, we don't have a solo cam, so I'm just gonna be here. All right, so again, we start with Mami Diarif. <laughs> I'll be back in like one minute after I wipe off the floor. All right, so Hopefully maybe Hopefully we'll see somebody wiping off the floor in these chess games. Okay. <laughs> At this point, I think Alexandra does this for hype. Okay, so Alexandra spilled her water. Mami Diarif doesn't know. He spilled water, like, on his brain or something. Um, we have Hikaru Sarana. Oh my gosh, so many matchups. We're going to really stay with board ones for now, but board two is really, really 
No, I, my sippy cup was on the ground and I knocked it down with my foot in excitement. Okay, so here we have symmetrical English, so we're going to go to a different game. Let's go to Steven Zierk. Extremely strong player, and he's on board two. Uh, he's on the mechanics. He's playing. Oh, I, we keep we keep getting uh, we keep getting Chengdu, but I guess they deserve it. So, you know. all right. Um, so you're looking at the game between Steven and Zerk. I will catch you up there with the Z kid. See how he's doing. Wait, there was no need to tilt your camera. You were fine. <laughs> okay, I'll put it back. Sorry about that. We're we're now now you're just the giant head, <laughs> like five head, five head. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I'll I thought I had knocked it down when I was getting under the table. But we're good now. No, no, it's good. It's good. I can I can hide under the table too. This commentary <laughs> can get very exciting. I, I just, um. By the way, this position is very similar to what uh, we saw Hikaru do. Right, where he was chasing the bishop, and try and eventually traded it off on g6. Yeah. Uh, so Let's... we'll see if Steven Zerk wants to go for something like G4. But I'm guessing we should probably hop around games since there's so many going on at the same time. All right. Let's... A Super Saiyan asking for Hikaru. We do get a lot of Hikaru requests. And you guys can also watch on his channel if you want. Yeah. Uh, he opened with the Grob. Okay, now we got to go. Oh my goodness. Hikaru Nakamura played 1G4. I'd say I'm surprised, but that would be a lie, as he does like playing these trolley openings. Um, he actually played G4? I mean, I, I can't believe this. Oof. And the Seattle Sluggers are pretty close to the Sa San Francisco Mechanics, so they do have a good shot at not getting relegated if they get some wins. But it is Hikaru who tends to win anyway, so if he wants to make it a little bit more entertaining, that's fine. He's been one of his team's MVP as it is. I'm really, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you've got one of the world's premier players, one of the best chess, one of the best streamers on Twitch, second to Alexandra, of course, and <laughs> and my man plays one G four, like on camera, and he's... he was trying to take the attention away from me spilling my water, which is why he played the grub. So thank you, Hikaru. I appreciate it. Nice human being. Chess says those are some legit headphones. <laughs> That's true. Um, but I don't actually think Hikaru's position is too bad here. No. He just traded the queens off, so his awkward king doesn't matter much anymore. He's going to have to develop his knight from g1 pretty soon, get the bishop out of the way. But it seems like he's fine here. Didn't you just say he has to get a playable position out of the opening and that's his goal? Yeah, I, I mean, for Hikaru, anything is playable. I think Hikaru can give a lot of odds to players in terms of position, and it's still going to be fine. So, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, uh, all right, so bishop g4. Okay, and I'll quickly look and see if there's any other games that are getting a little crazy as we Sure. Start. I think, honestly, the, mo the most fun we're going to have is with the board fours. There's a lot of young, talented players, but... You know, being young and talented doesn't always uh, doesn't always prevent you from making blunders, and that's why quick time, right? Ten, okay, Daniel Naroditsky already drew his game. Yeah, I saw that um, with Wang Yue. They just traded off into a rook and pawn end game very quickly and accepted a draw. Got it. So the pandas are not too worried about accepting draws since they're so high up in the standing here. Yeah, they can just they can just make fifteen move draws and. Call it, you know, call it an evening. Uh, Soggy Cheese versus John Bartholomew. I want to hang out here for a bit. For sure. And John we got Bartholomew. a lot of John Bartholomew fans in the chat. What do you think of his position here? He's not a... Was this a ready? Oh, this was a Torre. Interesting. Uh, so this was a Torre. And... Black went for a very standard kind of E5. Trading it in the center, knight f3, rook e8. And then John Bartholomew, even though he set up his pieces, didn't move the rooks, played c4, taking advantage of the fact that he's got this dark squared bishop, 
pinning the knight, so the knight obviously has nothing to do on d5, and if pawn takes d5, queen takes d5, the queen will always be a target with the bishop. There's going to be a weak pawn on c7. If d c4, bishop c4, pressure on this diagonal, and, well, I mean, bishop g4 would be nice if it was pinning, but it doesn't pin anything, so here we are, right. h6. Okay, so h6, after white plays bishop h4, can soggy cheese consider g5? Probably, yes. Yeah, it's G5. it's one of those Sorry. it's one of those moves that will probably end up being a mistake later on in the game because it's weakened his king side, but it, at the time being it pushes the white bishop back and then gives him some attacking on the king side chances after he moves his knight off of the f file so he could potentially prepare f5. I like c5 here, but the thing about c5, it's very committal. If you play a move like c5, you're locking the structure, and now you basically have to commit yourself to a queenside pawn storm. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, c5 does look possible with the idea of b4, b5. How about this idea? How about this idea? Can you play bishop takes g6? Right now? Right away? Yeah, and then if fg, okay. you have either bishop f6 or queen takes g6. So if you play bishop f6, bishop f6, oh, just queen g6. This is just winning because you attack three pieces. Right, you get the rook after that. Yeah, so Ooh. so bishop takes g6 does look like a very big problem. Maybe you don't take it, maybe you play something. But the thing is, I don't really know what you would play. So... Maybe yeah. that's what Bartholomew's calculating. He's probably calculating the difference between the move orders. If you play bishop takes, bishop takes, and then bishop takes g6, or if you just play bishop takes g6 in one go. Right. Is there anything he should be careful of? Um, we looked already what happens if black takes back on g6 with the f-pawn. Is there any way black can just try to avoid it? Does he have any counterplay? Um, for example, pushing something like c5 to chase the knight away. Probably... Mm. Nothing too crazy. Yes, yeah, c five could be could be a good choice. The thing is that Bartholomew's now tanking, right? So he's calculating. I'm sure either c five or bishop takes g six or both, but I don't think you can play both together because with the queen on b six, it it's much better than kicking the queen back to c seven. Then it'll actually defend the king. So. If John Bartholomew spends too much time and decides, ah, I don't know, I don't know if this is any good, and then just plays regular chess, he would have just invested five minutes into something he could have probably spent ten seconds playing. So Right, right. But it is one of those moments where you do have to take the time to calculate it out, because if it works, you're probably winning the game. Um, you're right. If he doesn't do it and he's just low on time, that was a bad decision. So hopefully we'll see some magic. So okay, there we go. Bishop takes f6. Committal decision. That means bishop g6 must be coming. Otherwise, there's no reason to trade that bishop. By the way, why is black thinking? Okay, so he... Now bishop g6. He was thinking for a dramatic effect, you know. What is his idea? Is it bishop g6 and then if you play bishop takes d4, bishop, bishop takes... Yeah, so probably bishop d4, bishop f7, something like this. King f7, queen h7. Oh, queen h7 doesn't work because bishop back. So you have to play rook takes d4 first. Right. And then, like, king g7. Oh. Oh? Like, so, for instance, bishop takes d4. I mean, oh, well, actually, you don't even have to play bishop takes f7. I mean, you can just play rook takes d4. Right, you can... Yeah, and and then I, as I said that, some someone in chat was like, what if you just take back? Yes, I was just looking if bishop f7 was winning, but... I guess it's a little bit too much. Just rook d4. So c5. Getting complicated. I mean, he might as well try here. He's afraid of taking back on g6. And if it's worse for him anyways, then he might as well add camp complications, especially considering that John Bartholomew has been getting lower on time. Um, if you... What exactly is the threat? So if knight f3, you still can't take... Oh, you can! Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. You can, because after king f8, the rook is guarded and the queen guards f6. So what are we what are we looking at here for white? Obviously, the forcing moves to just go forward. Take the pawn or play bishop h7. Mm -hmm. What 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 else what else is there? This well, was bishop our... h7 is safe already, since white's protecting the piece that is under attack, and then he would have just gotten a pawn up, right? Mm-hmm. Because he can move his knight after. Um so at the very least, he can do that. Maybe he does have a better line. So, 
Oh, it's getting tough. So John committed to this tactical continuation. I'm not sure if he overlooks C5 or he just... Honestly, he might have. He might have. It's just one of these weird moves and you're like, oh, wait, now I have two pieces under attack. This is kind of a problem. And because he tanked, now he's got three minutes. Uh, he's He's got to find his way out of the woods here. It often happens that in, in, in a position of so many tactics, there's only like one or two clear continuations and they're very hard to spot. And if you don't play them, suddenly you give the advantage away. Uh, he always finds the more interesting move. Okay, so he played knight b5. Right, so I guess his point is that if takes, takes, king f8, rook takes d5 is, is the idea. Right. Or queen takes h6, queen takes b6, knight c7. He's just going to win all the pawns. So what is he? So queen g6, obviously king f8. Now, take, take a pawn for free with check looks good. Right, queen takes h6. Um, yeah, bishop g7, you can play queen takes and knight c7. That looks amazing. Um, he can also take on d5, which yes. is what he just ended up doing. Um, already he's won back three pawns for his bishop, and he has this killer attack on black, so it's looking pretty good for him. Yeah, this looks very, very good. Rook takes d5. What is the material count? Three pawns for the piece. Rook d6, huge threat, basically winning the game. You can't even go bishop e6 attacking the rook, because then you hang this. Uh, in the meantime, the board 4 for Seattle unfortunately has lost another game. Uh -oh. As Momentine... Well, how I wonder how Hikaru's game is doing after that grob he played earlier on. I have it right here. Looks very good for Hikaru, but h4 is a little bit under pressure. The queen side for Alexis Sarana just looks like it's falling apart. I mean, a5, b6 just looks... Sarana, you gotta punish Hikaru for things like this. Otherwise, he's gonna play the grub against everybody. Somebody stop him. This is crazy. I mean, he actually just played, like, grub theory. And then... Well, he's doing kind of the Magnus, right? Magnus last year messed around with openings a ton. And then I think he got crushed. <laughs> really? So, yeah, he got crushed in one of the games. I forget by who. But... Yeah, Magnus messed around a little bit too much. Actually, I think it was against Sahaj Grover. Sahaj Grover might have beaten him, but... Oh, and we have another decisive result. Um, Shu Sheng Yu just beat Steven Zirk, so that's another win for the Pandas. That's impressive. Steven Zirk is very good. So for Chengdu to get a win against uh, against him and the mechanics is super impressive. Chengdu is just in great form, always showing showing that everybody on every board is 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 playing to win. Uh, Naraditsky drew his game. Uh, mm -hmm. Who's the the board three four? San Fran and the board four. Oh, Craig Hilby just beat Razvan. Oh, I didn't even see that game end just yet. Okay, I just saw it as well. Uh, wow. Dallas takes a hit. Dallas is taking a serious hit. Surfers though. aren't though. <laughs> That's a what surfers are you talking player. Talking about how hard it would be for the surfers to come back. And not get relegated unless they somehow manage to win the thing, which would wow. be crazy. Unbelievable. Craig Hilby. Craig Hilby. Salute you. Yeah, hard, hard to see Roseanne having a hard time, but it happens to everyone. Um, okay, let's. Sorry, Michael Brown is trying to hold an endgame against Jeffrey Zhang, and I, I don't know if hold is. Is he trying to... What is going on? Is he trying to hold? Is he trying to... F2 is hanging, B2 is hanging, but he has Rook D8 and Rook F7 ideas. Like, there's pressure down both lines here. Mm-hmm. Uh... Okay. Can you play Rook um, takes F7? Right away? Rook takes F7? Yeah, so lot. my idea is that if Rook F7, King F7, obviously you lose with Rook D7. It's just mate. Right, so Rook takes F7. And then you can't give another check on d8 because black just blocks it on f8. Right, and so if, if rook f7, which is my idea... Or I'm actually, gonna... maybe you can because you can follow up with queen d5. Queen d5. After rook d8. Rook d8. Yeah, yeah, rook yeah. you can play queen d5. Yep, if rook f8, there's queen d5. Okay, place queen f5. I guess he didn't see rook f7. Rook f7... Which, I, I'm still not sh totally sure if it worked, but it did look good. My Well, king h7 was probably, was, was the issue, but king h7... Oh, queen h5, queen f7 would just pick up the rook, so... I don't know. I don't know. Alright. 
Queen F5 still looks very good because there's all sorts of ideas here. He plays rook takes b2. What was Michael Brown's idea? Ah, okay. He's answered that question. John Bartholomew has two wins. It's a good it's a good day when John Bartholomew is 2-0. Oh. And it's nice because we're gonna be interviewing him at the end of today. So he'll be in a good mood. Chad, if you guys stick around by then, you could also ask him some questions you have. I think that was supposed to be a surprise. Oh. Yeah, so you guys didn't hear anything. We're bait and switching. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Uh... But yeah, we're going to have John Bartholomew on later, guys. Get hyped. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, I didn't say anything. I. Uh, geez. <laughs> I didn't okay. realize it was a surprise. Anyway, Alexandra, Alexandra, in your defense, that was strategic. You felt the chat kind of, you know, getting calm and, and not so into it. So you decided to yeah. generate Well, a little... hey, you guys, this is probably my last Pro Chess League. So it's been fun. <laughs> uh, bye. Bye, guys. All right, take care, Alexandra. Signing off the Thanks. call now. I'm signing off. Bye. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's see, let's go to, I mean, we can stick to this game as well, if you want, because it is heating up a little bit. Yeah. So. Jeffrey Song, rookie two. Uh, if you're Michael Brown, would you try to just go for some type of a perpetual here? Probably, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I feel as though Queenie1 is coming for black, maybe mm -hmm. a rookie one and, and, and just forcing the king out to the side, but... Rook takes f8 here from white. Yep. King takes Just, f8. King takes f8. Um, Maybe rook d8, and then you could trade off the rooks at the very least. Yeah, it looks like mate when you first look at it. So rook f8, king f8, queen c8, king e7 is mate, but there's rook e8, as you said. Yep. And then if white plays rook d8, probably there is some problem, like queen e1. Or... Um, yeah. after rook d8 check, after he trades off? Yeah, so like, rook takes, king takes, here, here, rather than moving all the- and then here I was like, can- can black win the rook? In any way. Maybe. I don't know. And he? Queen e1 check, king h2, check. Anyway. Let's let the players figure it out, shall we? Sounds good. He just played rook d7. Also Russian um, coming. Queen takes f7, maybe? Yep. F no. so he, Jeffrey just blocked it right away. He didn't even need to think about it. Um, well, if if Michael wants, he could just trade both of the rooks off. But the problem with that is that he will let black have a two-on-one pawn advantage on the queen side, which is something that could be converted to a pass pawn for black and then very hard to defend. Yeah, now, is this just repetition? Rook d8, rook d7. Will we see rook e7 from Jeffrey again? It, it it doesn't really seem like there's anything better. I mean, if you play... Yeah, okay, so rook d8, it's just the draw. Okay. And uh, couldn't, he, couldn't he have tried to stop that by protecting f7 by something like queen b3? Yeah, maybe queen b3 was playable. Uh, queen c5... Yeah, I'm actually a little bit perplexed. What was the difference? But, okay, I mean, Jeffrey made this decision, we can't really dwell on it. Hikaru beat Sarana, which is hilarious. Anton Smirnov beat Michalevsky on board two. Michalevsky is a Seattle Sluggers player, so Australia gets another win. What games are low on time? Here's an equal game. Whoa, this is crazy. How about the game Dredge versus J.D. Bryant? That's Conrad yeah, Holt, the board and, two. And before we go, Chad is pointing out that if Queen B3 trying to protect F7, the reason that didn't work was because of Queen H7 which is threatening mate and white would win. So it was a forced draw. Okay, I'm catching up with you to the Conrad Holt game. Yes, Mr. Holt. Uh, queen B3, Queen, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Queen is not on B3 in this position, it's on C5 and it's quite nice exerting pressure all over the queen side d5 b6 b4 if the b pawn disappears that a pawn's going a4 a5 a6 a7 there it goes 
And white is also up a pawn. Really the only thing that black can do here is hope that that knight creates enough complications. So... Right. Um, but how is that knight going to create complications? It seems more like a liability right now. I guess it'll hop onto c4. It'll be protected. But yeah, at best, it seems like it's going to be sticking on an outpost. Rook f8. Yeah, I mean, this is this is bit now. Will we see just bishop e3 and well, bishop e3 again, knight c4, as you said. So, not so sure. Uh, huh. Someone in chat said. Hashtag N forward slash A, not to be cons not to be confused with hashtag E U. You win, okay? You win chat for the night. Quote four. If I could give you a sub, I I would. I'm just not on Twitch in this in in, in this monitor. I'm just on the chat. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I see that the Dallas Destiny score is a little off. I'm sure Chess.com is fixing that. Yeah, guys. It, it's again it, because it's a. Uh, Everything is interconnected, so every little cell, if something is inputted just slightly off or the algorithm doesn't recognize it, it's going to be an A, but uh, it's better than EU. No, I mean, it's not to be confused with EU. So... Well, it is better, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's better. Um, okay, just making sure that this matchup wasn't NAEU or anything like that. This, also, this game is also our most important because no other game is this close on time. Uh, and the devs will fix it. We promise. Okay. Right. So, and I, I love that John is trying to attack here. Um, he's just going for the G five, trying to attack on White's king side. Um, he's looking to take the pawn on H six, which is actually pretty intimidating now because there'll be an open H file. His attack is so fast. Conrad does not have time to get his a pawn pushing. Yeah, this is actually much more of a problem than we anticipated. Well, ch threatening mate is important, so he plays queen f7. Is d5 hanging? Probably not. No, d5 knighting. was just, it looked like he was hanging. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It was hanging because it was it's just 93. A free pawn. No, so, no, so if queen d5, 93, I think queen g5 was the point. Ah, and then you pick this knight up and you defend. So I guess right. Conrad missed that. Conrad is a time trouble player who doesn't seem to be super good in time trouble. It's. A weird More of paradox. a classical chess type of guy. That's okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those of you who know some things about Excel, there was uh, an overlap on one of the parameters in VLOOKUP. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, Perpet! Unless White moves the king to g3, is he going to gain time? He's, okay, king he He's trying to way. fight it. He's trying to fight it. Interesting. Wow, apparently Hikaru is having chat vote for what opening he's going to play. That's, that's amazing. I love seeing professional take player, chess players taking the professional chess approach. league, the pro chess league, as seriously as they should. That's what we like to see. Um, I think it'd be fun to see the next world championship be determined the same way. Yeah, crowd vote reasonable. the opening. I mean, reasonable openings. Like, does white play d4, e4, c4? And then... Yeah. Yeah. So... I hate that college forced me into an Excel mindset. My college had Excel mandatory semester Excel modules that we had to complete. Did you have that, Alexandra? Nope. Huh. That's cool, though. Yeah, it's, it's like really cool. It's a very practical skill, you know? Yeah. It's a... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to build a PCL Levy, scoreboard. Levy is not only an international master, he's also an Excel master. Um, John Bryant is probably going to hold this. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say, like, John Bryant's an Excel master. I'm like, that's... How, how yeah. would we even... It's the glasses. Just the glasses. No, I, I love what um, John is doing with his rook there because he's attacking both the G-pawn and keeping pressure on D4. So White's king can't venture too far away from the G-pawn or else he'll lose it. Okay, he decided to shuffle his idea a little bit, but... Black's pieces yeah. are ideally positioned to get a draw here white would love to push the pawn and give a check and promote but he's just never gonna have the time yeah i guess king f3 rook d1 there's so many plot twists that await us when 10 seconds are on the clock especially if you have to hold a slightly worse end game can you look at tang's game sure tang again in a time scramble knight g7 who would have guessed oh, knight c7 tang Hang has on. blundered tang blundered Wait, why did he blunder? Maybe he didn't blunder? 
Because, well, I don't know if Rook takes e6 works. Is, okay, this, this endgame should be a draw. But... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Oh, is it? Be are you saying it could just because he dropped his pawn? Well, yeah, because he blundered. C it looked like he blundered the pawn on c seven. Right. Yeah. Okay. I see. I just I re went back a little bit. He could have played king d five. Got it. I thought you thought he was lose. I thought you were saying he was losing a piece here. That's why I wasn't sure. Um. Well, at first glance, I thought he was, and then I, and then he played king d six and. But again, holding this is is really odd. Like it should be it should be holdable. Uh, the point is, everybody, why is this even like played out? Oh, it's two pawns, two pawns, just you know, draw. Uh, <laughs> Offer draw. You sound strange? like the Fritz Russian person. Um, Wait, right. the, I'm very confused. The, again, you you need this pawn as a decoy to be able to go over here and potentially win. But before. Like he plays king d2 king. This is so scary to play though. Right, what? because white has to calculate what happens when black's king gets on g2, and it'll take him um, now another three moves, and it'll take black two to promote. Yeah, but this is now they're both queening at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's fine, and uh, it's just the draw. Yep. But that was a very exciting draw as far as draws go. Yes, that was far more exciting than the queen b8 check. Pick up the pawn. Okay, not, not forking him, but close. It's not too late to lose and get yourself x-rayed. That's true, but I would not wish that upon anyone. That's just such a sad way to lose. Um, okay, there we go. Nice. Penguin now two games in a row, the last game to finish. Penguin and his uh, Carlson picture. Very nice, very intimidating. I know. Two of the best bullet players in the world in one picture. Yeah, too much elo to handle. Too much elo for one crowd to handle. You know, like the you and Robert song. oftentimes get song quotes in your streams, so I feel like we should we, we, we could also do that. Yeah, I, I like that. That was good. That was Akon, right? Yes, yes, yeah. All right. Akon Tang yes. flexing with his pick. You guys got it. So apparently, Hikaru's chat was requesting he plays the Botez Gambit, which not to brag about my excellent chess skill, but that's when you blunder a queen very early on. Finally, an opening that not even Hikaru could come back from. Not let's not be so sure. We're in... D4 knight a6. The man has played D4 knight a6. Oh, this is great. I love this. This is Again. like Alexander. This is like being, you know, the people on top of the stadium who watch the gladiators fight, but one of them just happened to show up, like intoxicated on like expired like grape yeah. juice come, come at me man come at me <laughs> yo bro bro let's sword fight bro i don't know why the gladiator accent and naka is like that but it and just why is they're, they're apparently gladiators from boston uh yeah someday. it's fine hikara's from boston um uh, ruben is saying someone told me once that a knight at the corner is bad a lot of the time, you don't want to put your knights on the edge because they have less squares to go to from there. Um, obviously, Hikaru is playing a troll opening, but he has quickly got his knight back to c7 here. Chat, do you want him to win with this, or do you want him to be punished? Please let us know. Boston. Yeah, exactly, Sam Coughlin. Boston. Um, well, actually, what's really funny about this opening is that it's transposed essentially to a Tartikawa Karakan. Which is really funny. So, no, everybody, look at this pawn structure. And if we back up, will it let me do this? Will it let me override the game? Oh, yes. So, basically, this opening is as if we got this on the board. But for whatever reason, black didn't just go knight d7. Black played knight a6, knight c7, and now we have this. So, this is what we have on the board, except we have this position. Um, so... I do not like Hikaru's position, but I'm sure he'll find a way to get out of it. Yeah. Hikaru very confidently is declaring his team dead fish in the water and then playing d4 knight a6. Chat! What famous game... No, not famous. What famous player played the white side of a d4 knight a6 game played in St. Louis in the past couple of years? Woo, we got some chess trivia. Not only does Levy come in with the hot commentary, he brings you the chess trivia, plus one for Levy as a commentator, taking my job. 
after I uh, gave the John Bartholomew surprise up. Well, yep. we're still we're still co we're still co-hosting, so it's all good. Somebody yeah, says Shanklin. No, Morphe. Boat says. Okay. <laughs> Boat says. Hikaru. All right, another Shankland. I think those people might know what they're talking about. All right, Alexandra, what do you take back on a fate? Okay, never mind, you played it. I was going to say, do you take with the king or the rook? Um, okay, right, he already played it. So interesting, he wanted to keep his rook on the e-file. That's understandable. Um, now that he doesn't have a dark squared bishop anymore, maybe he might even put his king on g7. So he will already have to move his king, so why not move it to f8 first and then g7 instead of moving his rook twice? They say, we want to see Bryant Smirnoff. You know why we want to see Bryant Smirnoff, Alexandra? Because I think they are the only players that we're watching right now that have their usernames as their names. Like, it's JD Bryant versus Anton Smirnoff. I think it's the Whoa, only matchup Anton on Anton Smirnoff is down a queen. We did see a Botas Gambit. Whoa. Oh, I love it. Yes. So this is a C3 Sicilian... And, uh, and, wait, and, is this theory? Wait, 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 go to move eight and explain why he took on D5. Or why did this, actually, there's a lot of explanations I need here and not enough will su suffice. Hold up. Am I tripping? Somebody's saying this is an actual line. Okay, Evan, chess, I, if you say so. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. This I'm is holding. theory? Hold up. This is theory? This is what this is what the high rated effect does. You watch a GM sit down and play this, you go, oh wow, it's hold on. You go, oh, this is absolutely fascinating. Well, well, this must be a theoretical variation where black loses a queen on move eight. Wow, chess is such an interesting game. And then you watch the local crazy person at your chess club play this and you go, oh wow, this person's an absolute idiot. This is a free point at any tournament. So I, but yeah, I don't know. so which one of the two is it? Uh... <laughs> so Eric Rosen says, I have a theory that this is terrible. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So... Yeah, so I don't know what happened. Um, no, you can't misclick that. I I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I just... He's just down a queen, right? Like, I don't, well, like what do they want? <laughs> just, and just... uh, the Australian kangaroos are not messing around. They are fighting to the death to stay in the top four. Yeah, it's very close. Uh, they are four points away from Chengdu for second and four points ahead of the Destiny. You might, you might say it's the Destiny's destiny to overtake them. Haha, -ha, no one's ever made that pun before. <laughs> Good one. Oh my gosh, you're, you're so original and creative. I love it. Um, what other things are like my family <laughs> lying to me. <laughs> It's okay, Levy. You'll be fine one day. Mama loves you. Um, this is not your fault. <laughs> All right. I am also taking a look. We haven't watched some of the board fours for a while. Do you want to take a look at Panda Zero and J M A T W? So Jai Mo and Jacob Mayer. Yeah, I'm having trouble locating. Oh, it's at the top of my screen. Sure. Uh, this Jacob Mayer is uh wait is he, he i know it says he's 1700 he's not 1700 um he is okay alexandra wait Sherlock he Holmes. is 1695 what is elo is 1695 well it says that on the pro chess league official hmm i'm going to investigate this okay. suspicious report he lost two games, and he was uh, the first to finish in both of them. Right now, he's playing Jaimo. She's the board for WGM for Chengdu. Okay, and... nope, he is. He is. Okay. Okay. Hi, John. Welcome to the chat. Hello. I gotta say, I think my emote is slightly better than yours. You've got a great you... emote, but... I've got Are you a... talking about my emote? Yeah, like, it's a good portrait, but I have a magic wand. Um, you do have a magic wand. I, I can't disagree with that. That's a very nice one. I just have a cartoon, but you have to think of my classic emote, which is the head, the face palm. It actually perfectly captures my character's essence. So uh, we'll have to take up the jury on which one is better, my face palm or your wand. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. So, so what do you think of Jacob Mayer's position here? So far, he's doing all right. I mean, for a seventeen hundred, <laughs> I think he's yes. doing great. I think, I think he's 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 pressuring black. Uh, I guess he's not really afraid of a four coming down the queen side, and will we see something like knight f seven from from uh, from from Jaimo? I'm I'm not sure what the best way to get things moving here is. I mean, you can take on e5, but of course, then you're opening up white's lines toward you and kind of right. killing off the tension with the center. So I don't. I mean, yeah. I... I kind of like the move you suggested, knight f7 as well, because the knight looks really awkward on h6. No, but... it's, it, it is standard, but I I can't say I love it. I mean, I don't even think black is threatening anything. Uh, it's good to see so many Botez face palm emotes in the chat, although it, it makes me worry that we did something wrong because of how it's normally used. No, it's okay. We're fine. Great broadcast so far. Today's been a very fun day of shows. Uh... Whoa, let's go back to Hikaru's game. Okay. Because um, I don't think Wang Yue could have more doubled isolated pawns if he was trying here. This is really impressive. He's got four pawn islands. Okay, yes. well, he's still got four pawn islands. Now he has one less set of doubled pawns. Right. He's the collector. Um, so at least he's up a pawn. That's nice. Hikaru has a nice blockade around his king, so he's actually relatively safe here. He's just going to have to deal with some threats of past pawns here police someone's calling the police oh yeah i know blooper i know don't rub it in ah just received a message from the fam that they're watching the show what's up fam i don't know who's watching i'm not gonna say your names because that's oh the cops are getting closer all right guys it's been a great run as your commentator for today uh <laughs> My wonderful co-host is going to take over. <laughs> Go, Levy. We knew this moment would come. Make a run for it. Call us Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. All right um, back. So what would you give Wang Yu as winning chances here? Uh, I'd g- All right, they're gone. <laughs> they didn't catch me again. All right, so mm-hmm. Rook C5 is winning chances. You know, this, ki- this kind of endgame reminds me of, a, of an end game I played against uh, Korchnoi in 1975. No, that, I'm not. I'm, I'm I going. I didn't full... realize I was with Yasser Sero on today. Yeah, it's a, it's a Yasser. It's a stream. pleasure to be here. Uh, so Yasser, what do you think of this position? Yeah, I think we should stay focused, just because I could totally goof off, but it's it's only round three, so let's save that for like six and seven. Okay, uh, but I was actually asking you what you thought of this position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah before I before I went into um. So, uh, I think, and it reminds me of the Mummy Diarev endgame, when he had the rook and the split pawns, and he had mm-hmm. to find a way to push them somehow, but he also had a king. Right now, Wang Yue had to play, what, he just played h4, right? I mean, he played a seemingly random pawn move, but it's super important to defend against rook g5 check, which would come straight down toward the king. So really, right. I'm not sure. And right now you see him doing this, he's trying to mm-hmm. set up rook c6, Rook c6, queen d5. I'm not really sure. Or maybe right. rook c5 and trade the rook. I, I mean, I, I just don't know what he wants. Yeah, surprisingly, I actually think Hikaru is holding here because once white moves his rook, then d5 is going to hang. But also, if he tries to promote b- the b pawn and his pieces are too far from the king, then Hikaru might actually have some counterplay with um, putting pressure on the h4 or the f3 pawn. <laughs> Just giggles. Okay. No, no, no. I I didn't giggle at uh, analysis. I giggled. Uh, my grandmother wrote me a message and said, you know, like like Danny always talks about Rob Robert's mom calling him and telling Danny to like keep him safe. And my grandmother said, "We're watching. We're enjoying, but we don't understand anything." Because no one in my family plays chess, so they're just watching. I don't know what they're watching, to be honest. Uh, this is all well, chess. It's, it's good to have support. So, um, dear Levy's family, hi, I'm Alexandra. We are talking about this beautiful position here. And even if you don't understand chess, it's very interesting because these are two of the best players in the world. It's already a simplified position where you could see that white is up upon here. And we're going to see if Hikaru, the favorite here, can save a draw. I... Uh... Somebody said, look at 
Andrew Hong's game. Andrew Hong beat me once, so I definitely want to look at his game. Is this it? Luck is my skill? No, that's Daniel Fernandez. Is it okay. Roaring Seawolf? Yes! Okay, it was Roaring Seawolf. It was a 50-50 shot, because those were the only two usernames I didn't fully recognize. Very uh, funny, Muscat. Um, okay, cool. So we're looking at another John Bartholomew game, which is appropriate given that he's won the first two. Yeah, and totally not for any other reason. We don't want to look at John Bartholomew's games for any other reason. <laughs> nope. Nobody's spilling the beans there. Um, I think he's under pressure. Under pressure. Pushing down on me. Pushing down on him. And there's the copy strike. All right, guys. So... Is he getting so, mated is the question, Alexandra. Is he getting mated? Well, how are you going to be getting mated if White's Bishop is blocked by his own pawn and the only other piece he has close by is a knight and a queen? It's one of these instances. You know, chess would be really interesting if you could either A, bribe an opponent or pay a certain amount of money to remove a piece from the board or B, just do it. Like if it was a rule, once per okay. game, you can remove a piece from play. All right. How much would we need to pay you if you were um, White? If you were black here, to let white remove the pawn off of e5 and white to move. Oh, like how much would you bribe me? Yeah, how much would we would you take to accept tournament game? Okay, you know what? Let's not talk about this. Yeah, um, that doesn't seem very <laughs> ethical. Five thousand dollars. I mean, f5 here by John Bartholomew is scary. Sort we're of targeting the pawn. How he doesn't want to open up the position here. He's, Why are you he allowed on passant? Wait, actually, oh, so I, th is his idea that if pawn takes f6, queen takes g3, pawn takes g7 check, and the queen comes back to take the pawn? Uh, right, because that would be good for him since white would have to give off a bishop, but I don't think that, okay, hang on, they're playing into this. Oh, did he blunder fg? He might have just blundered that fg3, defense f6. Yeah, just, just uh, take back the queen, um, and then... Oh, wait. How about F E seven? That's also just a funny move. F takes E seven. F takes so. E seven, right? Because you're gonna get one of the rooks back. Um, but yeah. let's see. At the end of that, White would have a rook and a bishop for a queen. So that doesn't seem ideal. Maybe no, just but just back. but just knight F six. And the worst part about knight F six is that it's almost impossible to stop any discovered attack without seriously weakening yourself. Because you can't go king g8, and if you play king g7, you're just walking... It's basically like just walking into like a... I don't know, like a water gun. Just I have a, I have like a super soaker, and you're like, oh, It doesn't hurt, man! And then you end up with like... I I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really play with water guns. I didn't have much of a childhood. So, Bishop... No, I would not want to play with water guns with you after that story either. So, uh, I'm glad that Andrew was able to get away from the check. It looks like he's just in a better position now. Or John may have... Just give him, him an extra pawn, and he also will have to deal with the pawn on e6 eventually becoming a target. The hackers are in the heat of things for a playoff spot. Uh, Azeri Chess versus Dallas. We have looked a bit at their game so far. Also, Count Live in the chat, a San Jose player. So he's... Uh, Skewing our attention just a little bit, we will honor his request by looking at, at Mami Diarov. Mami Diarov is doing really well. San Jose is half a point out of first after uh, two rounds, and so far so good. Smooth Let's sailing. Let's look at Azari Chess. He is a fun person to watch. To hang out with. And you said you were you said you were a fan of Jeffrey Song before we started, right? Yeah, I think. Je I mean, Jeffrey's on the cusp of like breaking twenty-seven. I think. Yeah, so the, I, I understand why. Well, it's going to be some time, but I mean, he's he's only getting better, and he basically wins like any tournament he touches. So, uh, it's really great. He's really good. Sorry, I, he, I'm sure he is. Um, but before you continue fanboying, um, I, was I guess because he has a pretty great position here, too. After just trading bishops, he's up a pawn. Do you think he'll be able to hold it? Like, you mean win it? Because I can hold being up a pawn against Jeffrey. I can hold it against Magnus. Okay. Um, I but... mean, do you think he'll be able to hold the pawn and potentially convert to a win? I should have asked. 
Oh, well, what's his plan, right? This is always the question to ask. How are you going to play? Uh, in many of these instances, you can go after the A-pawn, but it will result in you losing the C-pawn, a two-rook versus two-rook endgame with an extra A-pawn. I think you can push your opponent for a very, very long time, but I, I you know, I it will leave it up to the players to kind of determine what ends up happening. I think things right. will be decided in a time trouble. Also, kingside pawns are completely symmetrical. The structure is completely symmetrical. The four to one and a half time situation is... A it, nice advantage for Mr. Yeah, Jeffrey here. Yeah, he gets to think, he gets to slowly stew the pressure against Shaq while Shaq has to find a defense. But the thing about playing these 2800 rated players, and Shaq is 2820 and a very definitive top three player in the world, is that he knows he knows how to hold endgames like right. scientifically i mean he he probably has even seen we look at this position and it's new to us chat looks at this position it's new to chat mommy Diarov might look at this position and go oh yeah i've seen like four endgames like this and, and and you're just like how do you even like when you look at a game and you study right you look at the opening you go oh this opening happened in this kind of game the structure but the particular end games that these guys study is, is just mind blowing. So Rook is off the board right. now, and um, yeah. Looks um, like also, we should take a quick look back at Anton's game because if you remember, he was down a, a queen for two pieces earlier, and now he's in a very interesting position. I'm not saying the Botas Gambit is solid, but I'm not saying that it isn't. So well, he we... probably just can't lose now, right? I, exactly. Yeah, this is pretty crazy, actually. Uh, so clearly this is a line. Where's Eric Rosen at? He said, uh, my theory is that this is, uh, what did he say, bad? Terrible? Um, <laughs> oh, he said, my theory is that this is not theory. Yeah, Something I, think like said, that. I think he said it's terrible. I think he was even like sharp, more sharp-tongued. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, okay, so, I mean, I would still prefer to be white here. Oh, Jeffrey won! What? Wow! Wait, Jeffrey just 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 got into a winning pawn endgame. Wait a second. Let's go study this and give the man a medal. Um, Wait, Shock just traded into a lost endgame, I guess. Oh yeah, why would he trade his his rook? Maybe he thought that. Is he just lost? Wow. Yeah, his king is gonna be pushed away. White's gonna grab the a pawn, and it's too late for Black. Crazy. And, yeah, he I mean he's just totally lost because Black has to stay near the a pawn. While well, white I mean, goes grabs everything on the queen's king side. That was so weird. I mean, Shach played that so quickly and then just resigned. Governor. <laughs> Maybe he never seen this position before. Exactly. And you know Wait. what? He's also never seen this kind of player before. Shout out Jeffrey Zhang. Crazy. Dallas coming up. Craig Hilby has won another game. Alexandra. And. I'm still confused looking at this game. I mean. What Mamadarov should have done is just put his rook back on d7. Was he losing after that? I've moved on to bigger and better things. I'm coming okay, back though. I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm back. Joining you over. I'm joining I'm you. All right. Well, we can't we can't both do what the other wants because then we'll end up in, in doing in neither. Are interesting. Uh, so jumping around just quickly, uh, Steven Zirk loses against Cristobal Enriquez, which gives the Minnesota Blizzard yet another point. Dude, they are. I've been sleeping on the blizzard, I gotta tell you. And you know what happens if you fall asleep in a blizzard. Uh, you wake up with superpowers. So, where I, where, I where? would have guessed that as well. Yep. How's Bartho? Let's go to Bartho. Let's go to Bartho. What is this position? D3, D2, D1. It's perpetual on the board. Knight H7, Knight F7. It's probably just a draw. I mean, okay. white can't do anything, right? That's a good game for... That's a good result for True. SF here. Is SF getting closer to maybe getting in the top four? I don't know. But I know that Hikaru's got quite an endgame. A queen endgame. Where Wang Yue basically did everything right. And here's a moment right now. Hikaru broke through on the king side. Is this even considered the king side anymore if your king's on a7? It, it is, right? Like Technically, yes. Technically, okay. yes. Uh, All right, so... Hikaru, funny enough, is up a pawn here. Which is not what you would have expected earlier in the position. But white is a lot closer to promoting his <laughs> B-pawn. Wait, yeah. You make a great point. It's move 91 and Hikaru's up a pawn. If we go back to around here, <laughs> Hikaru was down, what, 3? 2. 
Okay, Too it was never here. that crazy. It felt like a lot more, but slowly but surely his pressure paid off. Now we have this position, and mm -hmm. this is and, tough. Well, there's always perpetuals in positions like this. I don't know if it was called the windmill or what it was, what the name of the technique is. Just the draw, right? Queen d5, and yeah, because queen b5, you go back if king a6, queen a8, king d5. Yep. Uh, I think Hikaru is very good, I think, at these, at these kind of. I think they're just taking a draw. Yeah. It's just a draw. All right. Well, that was the fun draw. Well, it's Hikaru. actually not so... It's not over yet. The curious thing Wait is... Wait a if second. You... Wait a second. Yeah. Hang on. So I was just surprised he played queen d2 because he kept repeating queen d5. And queen d5 was important because it was looking towards a8. I think Hikaru may have blundered the perpetual just by changing up the move order for no. Hi, Bay. Bay's mm -hmm. helping out Hikaru's chat. What is he at? Like 2,000 viewers. Just, Bay. Uh, he's, he's, if you guys want to watch twitch.tv slash GM Hikaru, no shout out necessary. If anyone's in this chat and is not a follower of that channel, I don't know. Get your life together. What can I say? You don't have to follow. Me, you don't have to follow Alexandra. If you need to follow one channel, like, please follow us. It's uh, twitch.tv slash GM Hikaru. Uh, wow. And what? Wait, he's not. What, is someone in chat said he's trying to win. Oh, so that's why he didn't go for the perpetual. Okay. So well, he didn't miss it, obviously, since he had it. Am I, am I, am I crazy? How can you. I just don't understand why he wouldn't want perpetual when. If he doesn't have a perpetual, White's probably promoting first on B8. Why do we even have these jobs? <laughs> if <apparently laughs> we're, we're, we're Black is trying to win? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he wants to win. I, I don't know. Um, <sighs> wow, so many results are in, guys. Let's jump around a little bit. Uh, Michalevsky has won a game against Zhu Zhang Yu. Um, yeah. Oh, spills. That's terrible. Okay. Well. Wait. What? It backfired. How did it backfire? Yeah. Whoa! Where's his rook? Where's Where's Anton Smirnov's rook? Did he? Wait, well, let's go all the way. But where's it? Where, did he just He just blundered well, a rook. It's because he didn't follow mainline Botez Gambit, which is you can only blunder your queen and you have to play perfect the rest of the game. So. Wow! Look at this. Look at this, Sam Copeland, where are you at? G5, brilliant move. All the pawns are having a convention, but it's invading the castle and just, just brilliant. I mean, he just got his, he, oh, and, and it, I mean, this is wow. just. Wow, John Bryant, what John, an MVP, what a save. Honestly, I think if your initials are JB, I mean, John Bartholomew, John Bryant, Justin Bieber, like Jose Bautista, you're, you're just, you're just a star. And Hikaru drew the game. Okay, yeah, who trying to win, yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was... <laughs> okay, anyway. Can he win this? Can he win this? I mean, he must, right? He must. Uh, you mean John Daniel? Yes. So let's see if Black can pull off a draw. Okay, so if he keeps his bishop chilling on e3, then he's never going to lose the a pawn or the f pawn. King d5. Okay. E3, yeah, no, it's just over. Yeah, King D5 is a great move because if E3, you take the bishop. If E2, you give a check and you take the F2 pawn. And somebody complained earlier, if Levy doesn't draw arrows, it's going to be a very long evening. I don't know why you're British in my impersonation, but... Uh, so Maybe because if... he was a little... Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, finish that oh, sentence! Oh, no, there goes the bishop. Oh, he didn't take the bishop. King E6. Well, you don't have to. You can just go mate, right? So... Sure, sure. I myself... Take, take on d4. Oh, that would have been stylish. Take d4 and queen h8 mate. Oh, right. He didn't take... No, actually, I don't have an explanation because there was no promotion. But fine, just checkmate him the, the beautiful way. Forget free pieces. Can we try that again? Queen g4 check. Oh, he's going to do it. King f8 because you've got to repeat. Always repeat. Take the bishop. He's listening to the stream! Woo! <laughs> Kaboom. So Sarana wow. got his queen back, right? But then he wow. lost. Oh, Smirnov, Smirnov, sorry. Smirnoff. What a stylish win. Okay, let's quickly hop on to the last game, Safarli and Conrad Holt, just because it's the last one. Oh, um, wow. Minnesota this... has nine points out of uh, 12. Wow. Not bad. Not bad. 
Not bad. Um, all right. So obviously, Safarli is trying to hold a draw here. He should be able to. What do you think, Lev? Lev. Okay. Lev. Uh, I got. I got to answer now. You've shortened Sof my Lev. name. I'm losing letters off my name. It's just the equivalent of getting <laughs> fired. Soon I'll just be <laughs> Lay. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, L? No. Uh, this is. I actually had this end game at an over the board game, uh, like like two weeks ago. But we started with three pawns each. And I had so low time, I actually wasn't able to come up with any sort of winning plan. It is winning. If you have three pawns each, it's much easier to draw in this situation because the king and the bishop just stand together. There's no way for black to kick the rook out, uh, to, to black to kick the king out. And um, I was informed when I was like nine of a fact that completely blew my mind. Uh, my name backwards is Evil. You can pronounce oh, it. Yeah, that's YVL. fitting. Yeah. Evil. Yours is um is now time for the Joker laugh. Uh let's see what Hikaru plays in his next game. Okay, okay. But yeah, like basically we need more energy, right? This is kind of like oh, the doubt. Yeah, so that's um, true, that's true. So apparently the Botas Gambit was refuted. Well, he had a good position. I think it's just a complicated gambit that requires a little bit more studying. That's all I'm gonna say. So your name backwards is Ardnaxella. Cool. Arnexella. Sounds vaguely Lithuanian. Hello, my name is Ardenexella. You Huge sound like a villain. Monetary. The best kind of Ardenexella, villain. Ardenexella Zetob. I could I could yeah, I could see that being like a I don't know. Oh, King G3. Is he gonna win Rook vs. Bishop? So I don't think so. But let's it's, look at it for the theatrics, you know? So the way you draw this chat, like if you ever get this at an over the board game and your opponent will not take a draw, run your king exactly like white is doing to the corner opposite the color of your bishop. And basically from there, it's always a draw. There is no way to Zugzwang you, Zugzwang meaning leave you in a situation where you have to make a move that would concede something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you place king h1, it would always be, it would always be a draw. Don't run to the corner of the same color as the bishop. You won't lose. And you're gonna be like, Gotham told me. So bishop here. You, of course, don't play king up because that's mate. And now basically you can you know, now you have to be careful, right? If you went back, there was this check. So now you always give checks if the king gets close. And now right. yeah. So because the king needs to be on f2 or g3 to checkmate, and he just can't get there because of the controlling bishop. What I like, what I like that is that over controlling bishop, not every... giving the black king any space in that relationship. Wow, we got dark. Uh, yeah, chat. Anybody want to talk about something? <laughs> no. I just want to do fireside chat here. Sorry, keep keep going, keep going. I was just trying to explain what was going on. It's it, it's fine. If you got to talk, you know you you know, you, no, know, you can no, always reach out. Okay. Uh, we can talk internet prices. Whatever Robert Hess, you know, gets down and dirty with, we can. Uh... Speaking of which, I think I gotta actually send him a response. All right, Beautiful. these players. He's stopping the bish the rook from where it was going to give me. Rook z5 is closed, but there's a check on g3. And just bishop c7. Yeah, it was closed, but but nothing there. I have a question, Levy. When you teach your students how to play certain endgames position, for example, how to defend a rook versus bishop, do you ever make them do it in time trouble? Like, give them a certain amount of time on the clock and see if they can hold it? Uh, Most of my students are sub-1,000, <gasps> so we're still... Oh, we're good. Sorry. Bishop yeah, we're, we're good. And then, and then that's stalemate. Yeah, for a second, yeah, yeah, I was like, sorry, okay, so sorry. he just stalemates him. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, I'm still working on my students not putting pieces in their mouth most of the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the sub-1000 students, we, we have a policy. We do we do tactics sometimes, and we have a minute to solve them, stuff like okay. that. But, okay. Uh, we're not, we're not going to be holding king and bishop versus king and rook anytime soon. We're going to be holding king and four queens versus, like, king and pawn... So, <laughs> what I've started to do in class is if a kid cannot checkmate with one queen and he makes a new queen, I say you lose that queen. So you just push it, Aww. and I and I just <laughs> take it. <laughs> he 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 works hard for that extra queen, and you just take it from him. Yeah, yeah, just a corporate pig. That's all I am. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, it's very. No, I mean. Or like if it's two queens and he's like, I need a third one. Like, I don't think that's how it works. No, you just take all the poor kids queens. This is why you don't let Levy babysit your children. Um, 
Anyway, it looks like Hikaru is now playing Fidel Corrales. Guys, let's see what he's going to play. He just played Knight F3. That's not exciting. He's going to play crazy stuff with black, I guess. Maybe that's the idea. No, come on. Put your knight back on G1 or something. Entertain us, Mr. Hikaru. You might actually do that, by the way. If we get like knight F3, B6, knight G1, I might just, I might get up and C5, knight G1. Come on, come on. Oh. oh. Poor Hikaru. Now we're going to look at his games every time he plays something that's not absurd. Be sad. <laughs> Three rounds in, everybody. Let's, uh, let's look at our big score group, uh, window thing here i don't know how to describe this but uh, on board one so far after three rounds the top scores are those with two that's mommy Diarov, nakamura and my boy jeffrey on board oh my two gosh. he's playing with a disgusting chess piece set ah oh, condal now uh, he might go now he's playing blindfold really yes ikaru is playing this game blindfolded no, he's going back to the usual, I think. Yep, okay, sorry. Continue. That's unbelievable. He put uh, the pieces back. He put the pieces back. Cristobal Henriquez is the uh, Grandmaster from... Oh, I don't know. It's, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot his home country. Ah, trivia. I'm terrible. Ooh, sorry, Wait. who? Cristobal Henriquez on board two. He's playing from Minnesota. I, I know. Is it Costa Rica? Um, I'm going to let you know real quick, Levy. Anyway, board three, no one's perfect, and board four, only Raymond Song. Raymond Song is the only person that's perfect after three rounds. So. Uh, you're right. Okay, I thought it was going to be here. I'm not sure. Any Somebody can chat in chat can maybe confirm that. Um, that's Chile. Hey, Crazy Chile. Coffee Man, thanks for subscribing with Twitch Prime on my Twitch channel, which I accidentally had open so that I could host chess.com. It's Chile. It's Chile. I, I knew Chile. it was with a C, and I and I forgot that it was Costa Rica. So. He is doing it blindfolded? No. no. No way. No, he's not actually going to play this game blindfolded, right? Like, I hope so. I hope so. Um, okay, anyway, so back to this game. Uh, are there any others you want to look at? Let's see if there's anything crazy. I'm, I'm scrolling between the games. I'm so lucky my camera, my, my, my microphone has a mute clicker on it because I just had to sneeze. Whoa, uh, Craig Hilby just won a pawn really early in the opening. Doesn't, hasn't Craig won almost all his games so far? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is some theory, I think. C4, Bishop F5. Yeah, Bishop B1. This is, oh, this is some crazy thing. I mean, it, this honestly, this approach from Black is completely ridiculous. He's playing basically a subpar opening against a very theoretically sound player yeah and uh wow hikaru is actually playing his, can we just watch a stream on stream i mean what are, what are we even doing here like <laughs> yeah can we just open all right but this is this is terrible <laughs> well, you this know is horrible what you strategy can do? You go on the hikaru game and change the pieces to blindfold and we'll have the same experience here wait guys do you want to just do commentary blindfolded I'm gonna get fired. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop suggesting things. Well, I'm glad because we're both getting fired on the same day. Oh, for cool! Different reasons. Cool. Yeah, we can take our uh, severance package together. Just kidding. There, we don't. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. done. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's so awkward. Okay, so they want to look at Hikaru's match. That's amazing. Someone's saying his hubris will be his downfall. It sounds like we're talking about a Greek epic here. Nah, that person's been following this channel two months. They don't know the half of it. Um, <laughs> all right, so Craig Hilby, what does Craig have? And this is this is what I was criticizing about Black's approach to this game. Alexander. Okay, his pieces are back. And now you can talk about Craig Hilby. So Craig Hilby's opponent was like, oh, I'm going to surprise this guy with the Baltic defense. And Why now is everybody I've... British today? That's just that everyone's snobby in my accent. So yes. uh, very, very elitist. Mm -hmm. So... Um, White is up a pawn and has the bishop pair. Totally successful opening for Black. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he, he maybe just was trying to play some theory and forgot it, thought maybe he might be grabbing a pawn, and then he just got in serious trouble as a result. Hey, there are Disney's playing Jeffrey Song. That's going to be a fun cool. game as well. Well, let's, let's go there. I like that suggestion. And this is a game with a lot of pieces. This is cool. This is a nice position. All right. Okay. Whoops. So we got Daniel Naroditsky 
pushing C4, his A pawn and C pawn are isolated, which is not ideal, but he is using the C pawn to get some control over the center. His queen was on D4. He would have to move it at some point anyway because of the rook on D8. He has the bishop pair, which is nice, and he'll eventually be able to bring over a rook to the open D file. Levy, if you got to pick which side to choose here, what would you prefer to play as? Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I I, I want to. No, say, I was asking you to lie to me. But well, I would have done that. Uh, but uh, I think I think with black on, I, I want to say. Just, just kind of like looking at it, I'm not quite sure what to do with my queenside pawns with white. Mm -hmm. And I like black's blockade, but it, I mean, it, it's a matter of taste. Like, if black could improve his position to the maximum, maybe pawn on e5 and pawn on f6. And the reason I'm saying that is because the dark squared bishop would be completely shut out of the game. I guess if you do that, you always have to be careful about knight h4, knight f5. But I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe everything that Black has done so far is to a point. It, it comes to a point in some of these positions. You make a bunch mm -hmm. of improving moves, and you go, wait. Now what? And then White's like, huh? Got him. And then White starts taking over the initiative. So sometimes it's it backfires. I mean, I, I want to say that, that Black has the advantage here if Black goes for this E5 idea, but... Right. Black so is not worse. Like, so it seems like you think that it's easier to play this position from Black's point of yeah, view. Because yeah, because even though White has the bishop pair, theoretically, your queenside structure is broken, it's blockaded, your center is blockaded, and I think Black just has more space, uh, more more room to operate. I think e5 was good. I'm not so sure why he didn't do it. Maybe tactics weren't in his favor there, but... Uh... Uh, right, uh, e5 did actually look good. Um, but I mean, rook d7 trying to double the rooks to the on the open file also is a plan that makes a lot of sense. Um, rook d7 is flexible. Yeah, it's uh, a flexible move. And also, welcome back, Face Chess. Good to see you in the chat again. Ooh, and Mike well, the Whoop. Shaq is crushing. Well, I mean, Shaq is playing Michael Brown. Look, I, I mean, no disrespect to the newly minted Grandmaster, but in that board one round robin, you're the target, you know? Like in every round robin, uh, of equal strength, like in a Grandmaster Norm tournament, there is always a player who, after two or three rounds, it's very clear if they're on form or not. And you're like, that's the target. I need to win against that person. I would know. I was recently in a round robin tournament, and after five rounds, I had one point. I was the target, and I managed to actually score two and a half in the last four. But with Michael Brown having those two draws, he drew Hikaru, he drew Jeffrey Zhang. Uh, he's still a target based on rating, but. He's holding his own, but Shock is uh, demonstrating, I mean, just how good he is. So Right. Um, Man so, Bonovich says, how about after six? And he's saying that because in round six, we had a very fateful battle. What was this fateful battle? We, we just played in round six of the round robin. That's all that. It wasn't really a fateful battle. It was oh, like, okay. it, yeah. it, it was like uh, Goku versus... Uh, What's the final battle? The really tall guy? Oh, I forgot his name. I don't watch Dragon Ball Z, but Alex made me watch it. I have no idea. Um, but on something I do have an idea about, Jeffrey does seem to be playing the plan you suggested earlier with E5. Maybe F6 is coming at some point as well. Ooh, let me check in there. Ooh, I like E5. Yes. Yamcha? Sel Jiren! Yes, it's Jiren. 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 That's the guy. Very powerful. Everyone's like suggesting different. Y'all, 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 some nerds, man. Just kidding. Yeah, we're all nerds. No. Yeah, a little bit. Um. Okay, let's pick another game. Someone we just haven't watched. Uh, how about Viagra and Mikhailovsky? Okay. Hope it hopping on to that game. Uh, it, so Cristobal. His username is V-I-L-L-A-G-R-A. -A. Okay, thank you. I'm, I found it. Yeah, so when, when he made that, he must have known that two L's is the, the sound I-Y in Spanish. So if you say his name... I mean, as a Spanish-speaking person, that is a safe bet. Yeah, and so if you say that name, it's Viagra, right? So... I'm going to go with that means something very special and tender to him and move yeah, on. Yeah, he's trying to get the score up for his team. Yeah. 
Wow. Uh, okay, so is he on route to do that? He doesn't have a rook on a1. That's This looks like a chess 960 starting position. Yeah, um, what the heck is this king doing on f1 here? Um, but he does have a knight and a bishop against a rook, so it's much more fun to play with two pieces. I don't know about this position. If he could put the king up to f2 and swing the rook over, that would be nice. This It'll is, take so, some time. So, Alexandra, I have a question. Let's say you're playing a tournament, okay? Yes. Uh, your your opponent is literally one of the pioneers on e4, e5 theory. Okay, you're playing white. Right. Your opponent runs a blog on which every month he analyzes e4, e5 games. Your opponent wrote a book on e4, e5, I think. I look at his blogs, I read the book, I find his weakness, I exploit it, and I play into it. Yes. Okay, interesting, because I would literally never play e4 against that person. Like... <laughs> But it would, that's what I always find fascinating. Like, I think Viktor Mikhailovsky, I mean, literally eats, breathes, sleeps, repeats e4, e5. And yeah, he, people play e4, e5. So, I don't know. After so, this round, everybody, we'll be basically halfway done. And we'll give you an update on all the players and the playoff picture, which you see on the screen. Uh, notice how this time there's no analysis board because the games are too quick. And I uh, think it's much more interesting to watch live update of your teams getting relegated. Although, Alexandra, if we take a look at the at the standings, mm -hmm. nothing has changed except Minnesota and Chengdu flipped. Everything else is the same. Pretty interesting. Right, right. Um, do we, I mean, so the Kangaroos are now widening the gap between them and the San Jose Hackers. Mm -hmm. It seems like the final four might just stay the same. Um, well, Chengdu see. and Dallas are half a point apart, and I think they play in the final round. So, right. yeah. But uh, if it's three versus two battling, it's not as interesting as four versus five, right? We just saw those of you that don't know, you're just joining. Uh, the final matchup of the Atlantic Division that just happened was Montclair versus Montreal, which turned into kind of the, I, I want to say, hidden low key rivalry of the year. Uh, and it basically features them teetering in the Atlantic Division for the final playoff spot. Ultimately, culminated... Um, Minnesota Blizzard killing it still on top of the pack. Okay. Yeah. So I so the, the Pandas are playing the Kangaroos. I am looking right now at Jai Mo and Raymond Song's game. We haven't seen much of their games yet, so maybe we can take a quick look at Panda Zero and Moment Time. Yeah, being put on the spot to find usernames is so so tricky. All right, well, White has no connection, so that's good. Oh, yeah, I just noticed that Jaimo is struggling with her, her Wi-Fi here. Um, wow. So Jaimo's pawn structure is interesting here. Her pawn is pushed all the way to h5. That's going to become trouble later on the pawn on c4 is a serious target here the a pawn we don't have to talk about how lonely it is on the bright side she has the open d file which is nice um if you were black here would you try to trade off rooks and go for the weak c pawn also can we just quickly before i answer that question can we just quickly draw comparison between this position and the position in uh jeffrey zhang's game like five moves ago it's completely similar a and c isolated pawns bishop knight bishop queen on the queen side and i mean we basically have a very similar situation over here and yeah we see black locking up the queen side here right except C4. that daniel's yeah. pawns are not quite as over pushed in this position yeah it, well i mean first of all white is not just battling against black but white is battling clearly their internet which is it's better to have one opponent than two also black is uh that's raymond song he's super strong australian fm and he actually has three out of three so he's playing wow. super 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 well today well uh, go australia kangaroos you need your team to stay up there in the final four uh oh, Soggy Cheese apparently made a really big blunder. Do we want to see it or do we want to stick here? Well, he he lost the game for the hackers uh, against Board Force. Yeah, see these teams. Let's go back. I'm just gonna put this game back on the screen. But it's it's so interesting watching, like the surfers and the sluggers take points away from people. 
like the Marshalls in the Atlantic, they played against London when London had two out of 12. And then London doubled their score in a match and got two out of four. So London well, played the role of a spoiler there. But uh, it's, yes. it's nice to see that they still have their fighting spirit. So. Oh, Seattle is only seven points away from kicking the mechanics into relegation. Interesting. Uh oh, well, in that case, let's take a, a look back at some of their games. How's Hikaru doing? We haven't checked that game in a while. That is true. That is true. Let's keep jumping around. Hikaru versus Corrales. Hikaru just down a pawn? Yep, Hikaru's down a pawn. He is up a lot of time. Wait, is Hikaru just completely lost? I, I wouldn't say he's completely lost. The no, game his bishop is, still... is just trapped. He's king of oh, oh. seven. No, Hikaru's just dead lost. <laughs> this wait, is wait, crazy. Wait, wait. Where's this? That's it. Hang on. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's trapped. <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> oh, wow. Gosh, you're, you're right. And the Minnesota Blizzard stun Hikaru. Well, I mean, Fidel Corrales. Man, this guy's underrated. He's been way higher than that. He, wow. Unbelievable. Hikaru just trapped his own piece. There's G5, I guess. I don't know. G5, Rookie 8. Rookie 8 here is just winning. Be winning. Maybe he was playing blindfold and he forgot forgot about the bishop being there. I don't know. Someone was telling, uh, well. Just Rookie 2. And, and the like... Seattle Sluggers were very close to catching up to the SF mechanics. I think F5 is just a mating net. F5. Okay, he gives check. I mean, it's very much in Hikaru's style to swindle a I position mean, do like we, this. Do but... we want to see Hikaru going through this torture no let's 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 go to yeah i, I don't want to see hikaru okay i'm oh. i'm watching luck is my skill versus xwwzzz uh raymond song has won so australia is up one zero did raymond song win because moment yeah you know why he won because panda zero ran out of time he she Wi-Fi gambited real hard. Well, I mean, I think she's also in a very tough position already. In a tough, okay, but a tough position and just losing is. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Took the smoke break at the wrong moment. I mean, yeah, exactly. Happens. Unfortunately, I, I, I've seen some Ru some some Russian grandmasters like take smoke breaks with five minutes on the clock, like literally run, run, like come back. Really? You know, yeah, it's it's actually completely nuts. But, I remember um, the I had students and they'd be under time pressure, but they really had to go to the bathroom. And I'd see them kind of rocking back and forth on their chairs, like, "Oh God, I know what's going on. Just hold it, hold it." So, that that story sounded like it was going to start with the kids were taking smoke breaks, and I was going to go, "Alexandra, that's not okay. That's not." No, no, no. I'm just saying that's an actual thing that can happen in the tournament. You of know? course, yeah, of course. And that that makes sense. But uh, the smoke break is a bit intense. Anyway. F5. Uh, who is playing for what here? My, you know, my I want to say that with this bishop and pawn completely locking down white's king in the corner and the pawns, that black is playing for a win. But I, I don't know how. Can you play F4? Wait a second. F4 here. Pawn takes, rook g8, king here, and just bring... Oh. Oh. Wait, are you are you still looking at that line, or did you go back to the game? No, 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 nothing has happened. But F four was interesting. I, I'm just not sure. It, it it feels right. It feels like black is a good blockade, but white might just be fine. Yeah, white might be okay. I don't know. Daniel Fernandez. Okay, so I mean. Takes rook g eight, and I guess there's just nothing here. King f one, and oh, I just I'm an idiot. Rook g five. <laughs> just yeah. Okay. All right. So Fernandez is, I guess, pushing for the kangaroos. The cops are... Wow, Halver, that was a, such a sad story. Um, somebody thought he had more time on move 40, so he went to the bathroom because he had a minute left and there was no extra time and he just lost. Wow, that's terrible to hear. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's not terrible, that's just irresponsible. Okay, so he's played F4. Okay, so he's going to go for it. I mean, makes sense. He is in a worse position. The only thing he really has going on Alexandra, here is wait, I think, he, I think he also just missed rook g5. You think he just straight up missed it? I mean, what else could he have tried to do here? He might have fought king f1 or rook g2. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he just missed rook g5, like just, just g takes f4 and... 
okay, G takes a four is probably what we're gonna see. And then the line you just pointed out, rook G8, rook G5. And at least White's king is still in a bit of an awkward position. Maybe he can try to use it to slow him down, but Daniel Fernandez is just gonna be in a better end game here. Yeah, I mean, of course, opposite colored bishops usually indicate some, okay, rook b6, now you don't have that anymore, but I guess the point is that if king goes back, there's rook b7 with check. So do you play king f5? King f5 could be onto something. So he plays rook b, and now rook b5, king e6 would be a repetition, but he doesn't realize that he can just take on f4. Maybe. Okay. It's, well, he He's... definitely, I don't know. Well, I... Th if he put, yeah, he couldn't even put the king back. That doesn't stop rook g5. Okay, quickly. Andrew Tang's game. Yep. Chat suggested. Whoa. Peace oh, up. yeah, they just played into the line with rook g5, so that's over. Good thing we're at Andrew's game now. So many decisive results. Only one draw this round out of seven so far. Eight completed games. That's amazing. Only draw was Naroditsky versus Jeffrey. Jeffrey continues to be solid, drawing easily with black. Gonna try to win with white. He hasn't played Hikaru yet, I don't think, so that's a big matchup to look forward to. True. Um, okay, so <laughs> Andrew Tang up a bishop here in some trouble on the king's side. Um, rook b1, interesting. Just queen a5. Uh, the king is so cut off, and this bishop is basically the last resort of defense because if the pawn was on e4, you could play queen f5, queen f6. Take everything, be happy, take a smoke break. Just kidding. I mean, I don't go know, maybe. bathroom. Yeah. Which, whichever one you want to go with. Um, Queen. Okay, so there's e4. He's going for it. Nice. Blocking the bishop. He wants his queen on f5. What happens if Andrew just goes for the checks? Queen d1, John, king wait. h2. Oh, you said queen d1, king h2, and then I guess if back there was just rook g3. What is happening, Andrew Tang, at 12 seconds? Come on, Andrew. Wait, we cheering for someone here? Wasn't queen b7 really good? Queen b7 with the threat of... Yeah, queen b7 did look good. Well, I, I, I'm I cheering for the person who needs it. So okay. we don't we don't want to see him flag, you know? Yeah, that Minnesota's in first place. They don't need anything. <laughs> That's true. Um, but the Seattle Sluggers, they're so far away that... Do they even get anything, or are they just stealing points? Hold on. Is queen d5 like a winning endgame? I guess not, because... No, because um, the black bishop can hold both the d pawn and the a pawn. Yeah, with, or and the king was close enough. So queen b eight. What a what a ridiculous end game. Right. Queen e five trading the queen. No, he just goes to win the pawn. I, oh well, Andrew's winning now, of course. Yeah, he just he just got the the side pawn, and now he's up a bishop. Wang Yue hung a rook apparently. Wang Yue hung a rook. What is going on? Hey, Tommy. Uh. Wait, I want to see Wayne do it. Shout out Jean Bartholomew, who's totally not going to get interviewed by us later, and we totally didn't surprise everybody. I don't. Don't bring it up again, Levy. Just let it die down. What? What is e five? Mark really is desperate. Just, just queen d four. I, I don't. Okay, and now what? You just lost the pawn. Just okay. Andrew Tang's going to win. Yep, and I, I was quickly looking at Wang U.S. game as well, since now Andrew is winning. If you want to check out the ro the Rook blunder. Sure. Sarana, beautiful save here against Wang Yue. Wang Yue blunders a Rook, and now this beautiful Knight F1, rather than engaging in a race of pawns to the end of the board, Knight F1, B2, Knight D2 will hold the B1 square, then this pawn will go... Sarana completely winning because after yep. 92 there's king e3. And, and did, did you so, show the rook blunder? Sorry, I wasn't Let's checking on your board. Because um, if you rook. didn't, it's pretty sad to see. Look at move 51 after 93. Tagbon, good to see you in chat. Welcome. And uh, your team, the kangaroos, are doing very well. They're in the top four. Thank you for gifting us up to Facius. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. He just flat out hung the rook. That's crazy. Yes, yes. Four. Okay, let's look at the last game before it's over, I guess. Oh, this is the th this was the game I was trashing uh, Fike's approach to the opening, and now he's very fittingly probably just going to lose. Uh, F6, right? F6, F just F6, just F6. What yep, you, um, if about? he takes, it's what? not a draw. Because, oh. we'll see, what's going on? Yeah, because of the, the correct pawn. Um, F6 wins. Yep. Bishop takes... H2, F7, GG, yo! 
F7, Wait, King why? of Fate. He could have taken the pawn on the F file. That would have been more difficult for White to defend. You mean um, like uh, instead of taking on H two because that pawn was blocked already? Why didn't he take the F pawn on move sixty six? Oh my gosh! I think I think he completely blundered that. Oh, Craig Hilby just went completely crazy. He played Bishop D four and hung F five. It happened so quickly, I just decided to keep rolling with it, but like... Wait. That's fine. I was thinking of what you were saying earlier with F6 being so obvious, and no, then I... he just didn't protect his pawn, so I, I wasn't I mean, sure why he can... didn't just take the pawn, because then there's no more F6 problem solved. How can you not play F6? I mean, this is a winning endgame. Yes. Because you have the bishop of the right color. Anybody that doesn't know, if you have a bishop and a flank pawn, H or A, you're only winning against the lone king... If the promotion square is the same color as your bishop, because then you can force the bishop out of the corner. If you have a light squared bishop, you can't, and the bishop will just hang out here. But the bishop was the correct... Wow, I mean... Those F yeah. points matter, guys! This is Battle Royale Week 10! What are these blunders? Rooks? Pawns? Queens? Alright. Uh, four rounds are in the books. I know that games are starting. Uh, it's a matchup between Kangaroos now and the Blizzard. So we also have the... Surfers playing against Chengdu. That's not too intriguing. Let's stick with Blizzard in Australia. Yep, and the Australian Kangaroos are now even more clearly in the top four. They have an even bigger lead over the San Jose Hackers. Seattle Sluggers and San Francisco Mechanics, however, are very close to each other. So we'll see if that changes in the standings. So we, yes. we should pay some attention to the sluggers and see who between them and SF Mechanics is going to get relegated. Yeah, this is actually a very big matchup, very important matchup. Um, yeah. Very cool. So we've got four and a half points separating. I know I'm boring. It's fine. Bear with me. So if uh, Seattle... Has Seattle played the Mechanics yet? I don't think so. No, no, no. I, I, I don't believe so. Because we would have seen the Daniel Naroditsky and Hikaru matchup for yes, sure. Yes, we would have gotten hyped for that. So I think exactly. that's coming up. Well, this is, this is, uh, this is round number five. And yep. okay, cool. I was yes, I was going to say they play in the final. They play in the final round. Okay, cool. I mm -hmm. thought they played in round six, but okay, they play in round seven. Um, yep. Oh, let's look at Anton Smirnov, and um, I'm gonna just say Villagra's position. Um, because Anton Smirnov just cool. played G4, and I've seen him play this kind of opening in previous games as well, where he just goes straight for the attack against a type of King's Indian position, which is the opposite of what you'd expect. In the King's Indian, it's normally black who is attacking white. No, this is pretty standard, and actually a lot of people m might even misunderstand G4 like some sort of attacking idea, mm -hmm. but G4 is low-key, this is chess terminology, low-key, positional, and essentially you're playing to suppress, because you know, what does black want in the King's Indian? He wants F5, right? So you play G4 so that if there is a trade on F5, everything opens up, your bishop on D3 can come to life on this diagonal, King H1 and Rook G1. Uh, and all of a sudden you turn the attack back on the opponent. I've played a couple of these G4s. I, I like to put the pawn on G4 in different King's Indian structures, but I have never seen it with knight f3, bishop e2. Normally you either put just the bishops out, mm -hmm. or you play like bishop e3, h3, g4. You don't move the knight on g1. We see f5 anyway. Okay, black says, you know what, dude? I don't care. Just hit me with your best shot. Yeah, now the king sides are open for both players, so this is going to be interesting to see. I like this from White's point of view. Yeah, because King H1, Rook G1 looks really promising, right? Putting a Rook on right. the G file. And the question is, why does it look more promising for White, right? Because Black can also play King H8 and Rook G8. I guess it's because that at the end of the G file, there's this bishop, right? It's the King's Indian bishop, and you want it to come alive on the diagonal, but that's completely out of the question now. Right. So there's a pawn on e5. And I don't know. It, it, it's one of these things. Like, if, if black had played right now king h8, rook g8, uh, who would you prefer? Probably white, just because the rook has vision on something. And there's nothing... There's nothing... Yeah. Well, the only thing... 
Hikaru doesn't have vision right now. He's going to try to make a smooth transition, but he is actually playing blindfolded. Right, I don't check. know if he's going to play blindfolded the entire game or he's, he's, he's just starting off with it to make it more exciting. Wow, he played d4, knight f6, knight f3, b5, and e4. Basically a reverse Polish. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Such disrespect. I'm not going to lie. If Jeffrey Shang wins this game, I'm going to be happy for him. I'm going to be happy for him. I mean, we're, fr we're, we're, we're friends with Hikaru. He's, uh, he's streaming on Twitch. Streamers got to stick together. But I'm going to be happy because Jeffrey Shang, huge win for Dallas, which is fighting for a top seed. And he's playing a blindfolded opponent, right? So Well, the thing is, Seattle actually does need to fight very hard to get into the top six to not get relegated. So... Okay. Anyway, um, again, he's still being the MVP on the team, so I guess he could play this anyway. <laughs> Let's see where it goes. Yeah, everyone's like, what? Knock us blind? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, we're not cheering for anybody. We, we are trying yeah. to give a comprehensive picture of the league and then the playoffs and everything like that. But uh, I said before the show, I mean, Jeffrey Zhang was was for me and is for me like the next blossoming American talent, and it's right. it, it'd be really great to see him win some games. So right, I feel like Hikaru is still going to draw this. Honestly, I mean, he's playing the black pieces. He's very strong. It's not easy at all to beat Hikaru. Um, anyway, white is much. Well, white, I, I mean, white is already much better. We talked about this. Remember this pawn on d five way back the first game we looked at. I mean, Jarov uh, was black against Wang Yue, and. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that remotely correctly, by the way? I think I'm like... It, Wang Yue. Oh, yeah, you're killing it. Your pronunciation, pronunciation pronunciation, is 10 out of 10, unlike my English English pronunciation. Oh, boy, that was that was really laborious, that that, that sentence. I was just trying to prove my point as I was... Uh, <sighs> it's, it's fine. Anglosh is a hard link. Oh, I have a chair. Oh, there we go. Alexandra's back. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, all right. This position um, compared to that position is much better for white because black can't break in the center too easily. Black needs to just maneuver. You see Hikaru spending that time kind of realizing that, you know, he's uh, not too but happy. What do you think about Jeffrey's bishop on a4? Oh, it's fine. It, he, he's doing it deliberately. And the point is that you've already put all those pawns on light squares. So if you make this trade, it doesn't do you a disservice. Knight a4, knight a4. Maybe, no, I was going to say, is ba4 possible, but it just looks ridiculous. So knight takes a4, knight takes a4, mm -hmm. and double up on the e-file, you just have a great position, because black can't get any counterplay. It's very important. What did Robert Hess say? I think he said this while he was with me. He said, uh, another good way to look at who has the advantage is who can make the pawn breaks, and right. black can't. Right. Oh. I mean, if... If he was able to make pawn breaks, he'd be really happy because then his bishops would have a taste of freedom. He put his work on e8. Maybe he's hoping for e5 at some point. Um, but if he plays... Say it was he, Karu's turn to move here, and he pushed e5. Mm -hmm. How would you reply as white? To the move e5? Yep. Uh, you would... Well, I mean, you would evaluate if it's worth taking, but honestly, I think e5 does black a disservice, like... Because it just blocks his bishop, right? Yeah, like, if black was to play e5 here, I mean, you would have to have a very good reason for taking, and if you don't, like, this d6 pawn is not that weak, then, then you just play around it. I mean, because black can't develop either bishop now. But the thing is, if you do decide to enter this and trade everything, you mm -hmm. need to have a very good, you know, d6 is weak, e6 is weak, you have to have a tactical continuation. Right. So, anyway. Yeah, uh, good, chat is good to point that to... up. I think it's always smart to just think about what would happen if one side tried to do a pawn break, since it's a very common strategy in the middle game. Um, he has a tough position here. Let's come back to it and uh, check on how some other players are doing as well, because if you look at the game between uh, Fidel Corrales and Alexis Serrano, that is heating up. Um, Serrano has sacrificed a piece. I think it was a bishop. No, he sacrificed his knight to go for an attack, and now we got to see if he's winning. <laughs> it's a knight orf, like a pretty classical knight orf, uh, with the trade on d5. White gets an outpost, sacrifices a pawn, gets it back, and oh my goodness, what is going on? <laughs> Craziness is going so, so on. Corral is clearly confident, not calculating, you know, too long. 
Yeah. And this can and, be scary. Right, because with a bishop on d3, he just stopped any scary threats temporarily on the d-file. Obviously, his king is still kind of in the middle of nowhere, and he'll have to be careful of possible e4 moves in the future when the pawn isn't on f3. But he does have a pass pawn on a6. Sorry, black has a pass pawn on a6, but I don't think he can do much with it. So maybe Fidel is just up material here. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, the a6 pawn, yeah, I guess it is a pass pawn. He can just go. Depart! Get out of here! Go to school! A5, A4, yeah. A3, yeah. Get, yeah. get, yeah. Yeah, so I see chat getting hype. We got some some, some New York New York icons in the chat. Hey, Shout New Brian. York Marshals, congratulations. You guys have been killing it this season. I know Levy's excited. You guys are excited. Your fans are excited. Yeah. We'll see who else is going to make it to the playoffs in uh, the current Battle Royale. Whoa, Penguins game also is fun. Yeah, let's go to Pangu. Here he is. What the? What is this? What is this? I don't know. I'm just getting here. And let me look at the material count. It looks equal, except for the fact that, you know, Black's pieces are all huddling around his king. Is queen before? Is there like a mate? I saw the chess channel just said shout out to six thousand of you. Let's make a quick, uh, quick break from the chess and uh, welcome everyone. If you're a chess fan, you probably know what you're watching. If you're not, you're watching the Pro Chess League, and uh, this is a uh, ten week long international. I mean, there, there's so many ways to describe this amazing thing, but this is the basically the the, the fourth year, uh, excuse me, the third year uh, of this this amazing international. 32 team league we've got four divisions atlantic pacific pacific is today uh with incredible teams as you see minnesota dallas Chengdu, australia the list goes on and on and this is the final regular season week we'll be entering the playoffs with a round of 16 a round of eight and then the final four are where alexandra final four are gonna be in the one and only san francisco this bumping i'm from new york but yeah <laughs> okay. i'm glad well yeah so last year chess.com twitch teamed up ran an amazing esports final there was four teams i'm not going to be like robert hess and mess up who won it was uh armenia eagles triumphing over the chongdu pandas wow <laughs> throwing shade at hess well, I mean, it's... I don't it's know if life. I can still commentate with you anymore, you know? You know. Well, we're both getting fired, so fire I mean, like might as well. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, okay, Andrew's looking at Queen E6. I'm guessing Daniel can stop it by moving the knight to B6 here. But if he moves the knight to B6, then the queen goes to C5. Queen C5, yeah. Okay, so it's not, it's not every day that you play 15 moves and you beat a GM. So let's see how it happened. It was a Philidor. This is a Philidor defense. Very, very offbeat. So knight, bishop takes... Wait a second. What? King to... Hold up. What is this? I like oh. it when Levy gets confused. It's very fun to watch. What is... What is... Why did he take with the king? I mean, king... Australia needs to have a... Can, can we have a timeout? Can we, like... Oh, it was a mouse slip. Thank okay. you, Last Samurai, because we were going to come up with a ton of creative ways to justify it, but mouse slip makes a lot more sense. Thank you. you guys, remember we go back to, to that queen sack by Smirnov, and I was like, oh, wow, this grandmaster played king takes e7. It's a fascinating idea in this position. You watch like a 1,000 dude. Ha! <laughs> Stupid. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we, we can be a little judgy based on the rating. Um... Whoa, do you want to hop back to Hikaru's game real quick? It is heating up. Cool, let's do and it. And this was obviously a fun matchup because Hikaru is playing this blindfold. So, Knight 5... Is he actually playing this bl blindfold yes, still? he's still playing blindfold. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just made uh, Jemil crack up. He's like, so true. Of course, that's basically how it works. If, like, Mimi Diara plays King E7, it's like, oh, I gotta investigate this. Oh, it's just mouse slip? Okay. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, this is he actually still blindfolded? Yes, I just looked at his game. Um, That's insane. Sorry, oh at his stream. Okay, well, it's this is pretty scary because 
once he gets in time pressure, I'm, is he still going to play blindfolded? Okay, Penguin GM won. We were expecting that after the mouse slip. Everything is uh, going right for Minnesota. I mean, a first place team stunning in another battle royale, first place in their division, and they get King takes E7 on the board against the fourth place team. I mean, it's just it's, it's crazy. Like, everything's just falling for the, them. The stars are aligning. What can you say? Um, so Aussie is down 4 0. Really? Corrales versus Mishanik. Oh, Corrales just solidifying here. Probably just cleanly up a piece. Okay. Um, then who else? They have uh, Via, uh, Cristobal Enriquez with a, with an edgy username. Oh, yes. Anton Smirnov. He's got, what's he, what's he got going on? Pressure on the king side a little bit. And the board four for Minnesota is... Let's... Bartholomew, of course. Yeah, Finns, of course. He's just so strong that we often don't think of him as a board four. But Minnesota is one of those teams who's par who stacked players that are pretty similar in strength. That's actually crazy. I mean, John Bartholomew on board four, 24-60 IM. Yeah, I just I don't expect that. Um... So it's the reverse situation in Bartholomew's game right now. Uh He's playing Raymond Song, who just had a tough position, but his opponent ended up forfeiting. Now Raymond Song has a tough position, and he's forfeiting. <laughs> on the, he's, on the he, clock, he, right? Yes, on the clock. Um, he, he is having some connectivity issues. I, I hope he'll be able to get back. It's always sad to see a player disconnect, even if they're in a worse position. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> wow, Levy, have you no heart? No, I think it's I think it's hysterical that your internet goes out just at the moment that you get a tough a tough spot on the board. Uh, yes, like... Degrota, sixteen hundred is playing for Seattle. We were checking into that earlier as well. Um, what happens after Queen takes a seven? Is there anything scary there for White? Oh my gosh, that's a terrifying move. Uh, Queen a seven. Can I? Okay, so first I'm looking at Queen f four check. I'm looking at ninety four check. I'm looking at. Just taking on d3? I don't know. Well, Bartholomew's got two minutes. He would have to work out everything. So... Right. He might not have to work out anything if the clock works Raymond out for him. So I guess... It's that Australian internet probably got probably got throttled. Yes, exactly. Speaking of throttles... The uh... only heart Levy has is a sub heart. Oh, Noda. Um, well, yeah, guys. A lot of you would be able to play as board force as well. I think it's exciting to know that. Maybe one day you could apply to be on one of these PCL teams. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, why not? I'll apply. You no. you should apply. No, you're too good at commentary. We need you here, even if you're heartless. Could you be so? All right, we're gonna get copyrighted by like every major music. All right, so it should we just sit here for three minutes? No, I was looking around at the other games. Um, Okay, I don't think we need to look back at Fidel's game because he is just killing Alexi Serrana. Hikaru's game, Jeffrey, is still better. Um, is there a game that we haven't looked at yet that you would like to see? Yeah, wow, we didn't even have a moment to to finish. Uh, Steven Zierg defeats Altash Safarli. That's amazing. Safarli is the top uh, rating. Wow, he beats Safarli? Yeah, that's That's, that's really, an incredible really... up upset. <sighs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's a very good player, but... Uh... Meaning, meaning Zirk, but you know, even so, I mean, he's a pretty newly minted GM, just over twenty five hundred. But I feel as though he wasn't satisfied with just making GM. He's been getting better and better. Mm -hmm. At least that's that's the kind of vibe I get. I played him recently in Bullet, and he was really good. Like I couldn't get any. Also, his puzzle rush score is fifty four, and we all know that that's that's really the score that uh, yeah, fifty four. Yeah, fifty four. Yep, second best in um, the world, or fifty three, or fifty two, but something like that. Oh, wow. So the Seattle Sluggers are now very behind. They were, I think, like four points away from the SF Mechanics in the last round. But right now, it's 137 to 155. How have they gotten so far? Probably just playing too much nonsense openings. All right, let's go to... Uh, we've got Hackers playing against... Uh, I, I clicked on the wrong game. I, I did not click on Hackers or... Uh, their opponent, I clicked on Chengdu versus... Whoa, Hikaru's Suffers? now down a rook. Uh, yeah. You know what I have to say, right? No, but I'd like to hear it. Jeffrey Zhang 
Je Jeffrey Zhang for president, okay? Jeffrey Zhang for president. Let's do it. I mean, this this kid is something else. All right, let's stick to... Let's have out Holt. Let's go to Holt. Conrad Holt, Victor Mikhailovsky. Can Dallas seize the top spot in the division? Oh, man. Okay, yeah, so Mikh Mikhailovsky, the... E4, E5 champion of the world. Um, here he's bought, got both E4 and E5, except they're his own pawns. Um, one of them is an extra pawn, so that's not too bad. What do you think of just trading rooks and then trying to get into an end game, an easier end game, queen E3 maybe? I think I think it's a pretty good strategy. What makes this position kind of odd is that even though white is a pawn, you have double E pawns, obviously. So. Right, right. Uh, but it's going to be a long grind, and I and I think that Mikhailovsky is a very, very, very good player. Uh, plus, he has a huge time advantage. I've had to play against him in time trouble, and it was it was nightmarish. I couldn't predict any of his moves at a certain point. Like I just kind of went, you know what? I'm winning, but I'm just going to try to. He just got so much counterplay. So let's see how how his end game technique is. But I... yep, and he also is playing against Conrad, who has only 15 and a half seconds left right, here. exactly, so... You can definitely take advantage of it. I guess it's easier for your opponent to make mistakes when you have more pieces left on the board, like he does his queen. Maybe at some point he can get his queen on d6. Um, Black definitely won't want to trade that and give White a doubled pawn. Uh, sorry, a pass pawn, not a double pawn. Undoubling his pawns. The king of two he now. only bets the nuts. Good to see you here. Welcome Shout to... out to Poker, by the way. Yes, Poker mod. Very good Poker mod. Okay, Bishop D1. So what do you think of Conrad trying to trade off his bishop here? No, it's logical. Uh, if you get the queen close to Mikhailovsky's king in this open board, it's good. And also now you can't play queen D3 from white because after queen takes D3, bishop takes, you would be hanging the A4 pawn. Otherwise, queen D3 would be great to force the bishops off, and this advanced G pawn and H6 pawn can be traded. Probably white is playing very easily for a win there, but mm -hmm. you can't go queen D3 now because this little tactic in the A4 pawn is hanging. Right. Um... Some results. Bartholomew wins again. Morales draws Serena. With perpetual, despite having made, I think Corrales must have been winning. He must he have just a been perpetual. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I thought. Yeah, he was. Just I, I almost sure. wrote off his um, game just because it looked like he was up so much. And uh, Smirnov is trying to beat Cristobal Enriquez in a pawn up end game. We can stick here. They both have a minute, so. Okay. So. Uh, the thing that makes this relatively trivial, I mean, I want to say relatively just because, you know, I, I, I might lose this and probably would, uh, it's the fact that the rook is so active and white can't really move. White's only plan would be to bring the king to d2, which is what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, so. He has to be careful uh, to not accidentally blunder a rook by allowing rook h2 in a position like that. Um... Yep. Black can even just and Minnesota crushing. Hold wow, this on the they are, ring. They are an impressive team. Fourteen and a half already with two rounds to go. Yeah, Minnesota, amazing game from them. Uh, are are any of them still playing games? Nope, they've just crushed all of it. Do you want to look at uh, Mami Darov and Naroditsky also at some point? Yeah, let's do it right now. All right, let's go. Narrow in huge time trouble. Very complex position. Yep. So it looks like um, Amidaro found a draw. Is he just going to go for it here? Because he's down material? Probably. It's probably it, it, it looks yeah, too Daniel dangerous. Yeah, Daniel offered a draw. Whoa! And Mamidaro declined the draw, flexing on poor. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he wanted to offer it on his own. Yeah, he's like, no, I offered draw. Decline. Offered draw. Yeah. It's okay. It's fine. Um, Mikalevsky still playing against Conrad Holt. That game looks slightly more imbalanced than the Anton and Villagra game. Yes. Probably Mikalevsky is pushing for something, but it's it's it looks fortressy. Like there's no way in for white. And you can even lose if you play King C4. Yep. So and he just offered it. a draw. 
Okay, they drew, and back to the rook end game we go. Yeah, maybe he misclicked. I was joking. Sometimes when someone offers you a draw, but you were about to make your next move, you just decline it automatically, accidentally. Um, whoa, it looks like White's made some progress here. Mm, but barely any. Yeah, again, because your B3 pawn is so weak, the only way you would play this for a win in a must-win situation is sacrificing it. Yeah. Can you try to get your king over to the eighth rank and oh, like this, try like to be F8, creative? D8, maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah, is he going for? It? He's going for it. Oops, what just happened? What was that? So he is going for the crazy line here. Maybe king f8 here. I don't know. He could try to fight it. It's still going to be a draw, most likely. He can't make progress. If he moves his rook off of f3, then he's going to get checked on f1. Um... Yeah, I guess this is just the simplest way. Just like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope. nope. Access declined. Dun, dun, dun. Is it denied? Whatever. Uh, denied, uh... declined. Are they not synonyms? Okay, so this is Minnesota versus Australia, right? So assuming that this game ends... Good night, in a... LDS Jedi Knight. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, picante. Oh, my goodness. Is king e7, rook c6, like rook e6 just push the... Isn't this just winning for white? Hold up. Hold up. D6? Yeah. D6? The rook Wait. is stuck. Just... Hang on. You can't play d6 because you take on c6. Oh, yeah, because then you push d7 and the black rook cannot stop the queen. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Give up that rook. You don't so, need that rook. Wait. Oh, he couldn't take on a4 because of uh, check on e8. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Sassy. Anton Smirnov sacked a queen. Now he's got a queen back. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't do well with the ladies. I wouldn't say. Well. A very complicated relationship. I mean, I'm sure the ladies are very impressed by the queen sacrifices. So not so fast. Queen sacrifices are okay. It could. I think the reason this is winning is because of. Uh, the king's, whoa, I don't like this. No, 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 this was wrong. You shouldn't have let the king out. It doesn't seem like this is correct. Okay, this might whatever. actually be tricky. Yeah. No, with the king back there, I think there was like a winning motif. I mean, it just seemed really strange to allow the king to get this far, but... Uh, yeah, okay. Super time scramble, 15 seconds per player. I mean, what is White going to do? Just give a bunch of checks? Rook B4? It's, yeah. Okay. Um... Now it's a fortress. I think before it was winning. I mean, with the king, like, on E7 or something. Black play right. for a win now. <laughs> this is crazy. So if Rook takes A4, he can't, he can't take yet, right? Windy. Wow. C3. <laughs> Hold up. It's not too late to lose the game, by the way. This is not the way it was supposed to go. King d5. Oh, who's trying to beat who? I'm just confused. They're both trying to blunder and see who gets the last one. It. Yeah, I'm baffled. b5? Okay, please rook b3. Queen c1, king a4. So this should still be a draw. Yeah, because king a4, queen that you just go back. So the idea is right. queen c so queen a1, rook a3, queen d4, or like queen b... Okay, so uh, king b6, and now the a pawn is coming. So queen d4 and king a5. Oh, Uh-oh. He pulled it off. Almost. Don't oh, take with the... the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should so be... this is a win. This is a win. Yep. Wow. Ridiculous. I mean, this is why you don't play for a win. <laughs> it's just... This is winning. Yep. The queen d1, Tsuk's wrong. Well, rook's got to go far away. B beautiful. Beautiful. Check, check, probably queen a4, queen b5. Oh, that's creative. Uh-oh. He knows how to win this. Hold I'm, I'm sure, I, I think he's just being careful with 16 seconds because there's a lot of tricks that force you into stalemate. Well, rook b2, right? Yes, rook b2. It's, it's actually very tricky to win this. And in a time scramble, you have to, uh, you have to know your, your technique. Uh, Greg wants to know how this happened. Um, it was a, quite a turn of the events. Anton Smirnov. It was your fault. Win. It was your fault, Mr. Commissioner, because you said that Black was playing for a win. So he pushed the pawn, and then all of this happened. He lost all of them. He didn't want to listen to you. Just, just, he's playing for a win. 
Rook and three pawns is worth less than a queen. Don't play for a win. It's math, right? So, ugh, I'm frustrated. Yeah, the king can't get any closer because he's going to get into check. This is this is a little bit tricky for white to pull off. But this is one of the easier end games to win. If Cristobal loses. Oh, Dallas is in first now. Dallas is in first, 215 to 214. And two games to go and they also play a little late. And they <gasps> drew! No, he blundered us. Oh, goodness me. That's what me. he was trying not to do. Oh, he blundered rook b3, king b3. That's... Ay, ay, ay. Right. Queen d1 could have continued there. Oh. King a2. Oh, this is instructive. Ladies rook and gentlemen. C3. King c3. Okay, so this position right here on the board, right in front of you, it's mate in 13. Let's show you how to do it. Queen e5, move number one. Attacking the rook. Let's say the rook goes check, you play king b4. If the rook stays on the b line, like let's say rook b1, then you play queen a5 check, king b2, queen b4, and you inch closer. So king a2 here, king b2, queen b3 here, check here, and now you play king d3, and this is winning. This is not the same thing. Because queen takes b3, this is not stalemate. So, and I, I'm assuming games will be starting soon, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, I think, where was our position, our critical position? Like, somewhere here? Something, yeah, like, someplace here. Mm -hmm. But queen e5. Now, if you play rook c2, king b4, uh, again, if you give the check, you're just moving closer. Let's say just, oh, then there's the games. <laughs> and they're starting. So, um, close, but no cigar. Yeah. And a good way to, if you guys are looking to study those games, other than obviously practicing a lot of them, is understanding the main technique and then looking at the most common traps. That's how Duvaretsky's endgame manual does it. So practice your endgames, because uh, it's hard to... Because then when you play Pro Chess League and we commentate on your games because we're too scared of playing ourselves, you'll know yes. how to impress us. That's Exactly. Important. Wow, Shinya Kimura. How does Anton not know this endgame? Queen versus Rook is so basic. Well, it's much more difficult to play when you have five seconds on the clock, a ton of pressure. Um, I'm sure he could do that game easily if he had a little bit more time. But you gotta take into other, you gotta take other factors into account. All right, we've had requests, and we usually do this at the beginning of the round so as to not distract anybody. Hey, uh, Joe. Here comes the big score. Ready? Boom. Yes. Five games done. Who are the top scorers? In the round robin, super tournament of board number one, Jeffrey Zhang and Mami Diarov are both three and a half out of five. Fidel Corrales has three. Serena has three. Hikaru with two. Tied with Daniel Naritsky. One and a half for both Michael Brown and Wang Yue. Board two. Top performer is Viktor Mikhailovsky. That. Wow. Impressive. Um, board three. Machea is one and a half. Faik is one and a half. Top scorer is Mr. Tang with four and a half out of five. Crazy and to see him be a board three. Almost as crazy as John Bartholomew on board four. Yeah, that's probably like the, the biggest, you know, the biggest shocker. Tang on board three. Uh, Minnesota right. didn't go with uh, Thomas Beardson, the very, very scary Dutch I am, to, soon to be GM probably. And... Bartholomew with four and a half out of five on board four. Raymond Song four. Zhu Jiner with four points. Uh, Jacob Meyer has zero. But he'll be back. He'll be back. All right, my friends. Okay. Let's go to the chess. Let's go back. Um, uh, let's have... maybe start with Cristobal and Xu Shang Yu's game since... Cristobal brought his queen out early. Sure. And what is apparently called the Frankenstein Dracula variation declined according oh, to chess.com. Yeah, this is actually a really fascinating opening for white. Uh, I saw it played a bunch. I, I mean, I didn't quite know much about it. And then this was played a ton by uh, Topalov against Lenier Dominguez at the recent St. Louis uh, champion showdown. So I was following Hikaru versus Duda, 
But the last like four games that Tapalov had with White against Linye Dominguez, they played this line, and I think Tapalov won every game. So wow, yeah, this is that was really funny to see. So pretty uh, crazy. Yeah, we've got two big matchups this round. We've got Minnesota versus Chengdu, and it looks as though Dallas is playing. Uh, yeah, so Dallas is playing the Kangaroos, and the the teams are the other teams are sitting at the kids' table. So. Well, hey, we got the Seattle Sluggers in San Jose. That's also going to be fun. Um, yeah, it's like it's like kids so getting brutal. into a food fight at the at the, the, the kids table. We have our 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 final four. We're literally we're witnessing the playoffs because we are. Da- Dallas is playing the Kangaroos and Minnesota is playing Chengdu. This is this is perfect. Exactly. It's a little um, wow preview to what we're going to see in the playoffs amazing this this is great that we've we've got we've got our work cut out for us all right let's Did the let's... hackers come back if kangaroos get killed in the last couple of games and they do very well yes uh i'm gonna go with board four we haven't paid that much attention to zoo uh Jiner, the board four for dallas super strong chinese i mean she's wam but her live elo is even higher than 2400 so Got a very nice positional grind here against Raymond, but they've blitzed out 20 moves of Taiman of Theory. So. So. So at some point they'll be out of their theory book and actually figuring it out. But so far that explains why they've been able to get here so quickly. Yeah, I'm I'm not so sure that White has really succeeded in the opening. Uh, yeah, you have a pass pawn in D5, but we all know what do you do with Paths Pawns? Hold them under lock and key like a criminal? Who said that? Aaron Nimsevich. I like to answer my own questions. So, Black's got their own pawn on e4, and that one is not... Uh, that one's got no blockade. So, Mami Diarov just defeated Naroditsky. What? What? Uh, okay, oh, but... you mean like in the last... in What? In in the last match or something, I yeah. Also, they drew, so I don't. <laughs> Chat, stop confusing us. We rely yeah, on you sometimes. Nice. We. Why are you saying this? Um, it must have been in the. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're we're back to it. Um. Whoa, Daniel Naradisky has a really nice game against Michael Brown, actually. If you want to check it out real quick. Sure. But we were going to stick with our playoff match. Whoa. Okay. There's a rook on a3. It's very confusing. So that's yeah, my evaluation a... of this position. <laughs> there's a rook on a3. Uh, Daniel has his pawn on g5. He's looking towards g4 at some point. Um, he's just launching a crazy attack here. It's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> uh, l- why don't... Yeah, l- l- let's, let's, let's keep jumping around. How about... Uh, Dretch versus Smirnov. Oh, this is fascinating. This is quite a game. This is quite a game. I don't know what's happening here. Quick, count the pawns. White has an extra one. Hang Material. On, getting... White is down in exchange. Put an extra pawn up. Someone in chat just said, I don't know why I'm watching this, and better yet, why do I find it so entertaining? This is the Pro Chess League. Got some bomb commentators, not talking about myself. Alexander. I am glad to hear you're here. I'm glad to hear you're here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We are watching some pros play chess, and we're all having a really good time letting them do the hard work. Yes, it's it's really beautiful. We have chess from three different continents. Uh, eight teams playing a battle royale that is not Fortnite. By the way, who came up with that name first? Because that that's either genius or like lawsuit worthy. So, Battle Royale? Yeah, I don't, that's not a pattern. I think it was term, from right? a Japanese book, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Where so, all the kids get sent to an island, and they got to kill each other. And they're being tracked. But that wasn't your question. So um, we're coming back to this game. Who is getting trapped here? Smirnov or Conrad? Yeah, who's... Uh, who's got... <laughs> um, all right, so <laughs> let me. Just... What does Black do here? <laughs> you mean no, Hunger not, Games? No, it's not Hunger Games. Uh, no, but actually, it's a good question. What does Black do here? Uh, we always look at it from my perspective. Let's look at this from Black's perspective. Uh, 
I'm looking at it from White's perspective right now, just because that's how chess.com always sets you up to start with. Uh, the pawn on d5 looks like it's hanging, but White doesn't want to take on d5 right away. Okay, I I was joking. He does want to take on right on d5 uh -huh. right be, away. Be, because if you play bishop takes c2, it's not king takes knight before. If you play bishop takes c2, there is queen takes c6 with check. So, um, knight e7 is very creative. If you play bishop takes e7 here, it's actually pretty funny. If rook takes d5, just bishop f6, and black loses all their pieces. However, if queen takes e7, this is really funny. I think I might have just said that twice. So... The queen is under attack, and this bishop has basically no guards, but then queen takes e3, and you're mated. It's a very tragic ending to the game. Queen e1, bishop, you know, back, and queen takes. So that's Instead, the idea. Instead, they just traded their queens off the board. Right. Uh, Soggy Cheese has already beaten Jacob Meyer. Poor kid. But at least he's going to get experience on board four, so. Aw, uh, he wait. just got bullied. We've got another Wi-Fi gambit. The Wi-Fi gambit oh, is no, uh, no, no, picking it's up popularity. No, I think somebody just debated us. Okay, bishop e5 in the Conrad Holt Smirnov game. Okay, coming over there. We are looking at the Conrad Holt game, okay? Yes. I would like to play white you need, here. You need, I like playing yeah. with the extra pawns and the extra bishop, even if black has a rook here. What this, side would you prefer to play as? Well, I won't play uh -huh. white because I like bishops, I like attack rook, and past pawn very strong, so I like this. Oh, shout okay. out to Eric. What's up, Eric? Uh, Eric Charneski? Hey, good to see you. Yeah, he's a good dude. I've got... So, 92, 94, I guess, is, is the intention. So, I don't know. Spearnoff is like, yo, how do I get my rook out of danger? So if he plays rook g8, I've got two ideas for white. So either you play e4 and don't trade, or you play knight e2, knight d4. It's both look good, in my humble opinion. So I don't know. Um, okay. Jinbo, he's got this position. How about luck is my skill versus attack to mate you? Luck is my skill is Daniel uh, Howard Fernandez. We saw him mouse slip allegedly not go for his prep with king takes e7 so. okay and i sorry i'm about to catch up to the game with razvan pro if we... shout out to romania right yeah sometimes it just takes me a while to find them um, yes luck is my skill versus mass. attack to meet you yeah I, got, I found finally found them sorry about that no because yeah, this so is razvan's a... canadian romanian and you would know something about that. For Dallas, which is where I was born, could we have anything more in common? Not to mention his last name, Prewato, is priest. Mine is both as baptized. I'm just... <sighs> he is... What was that last part? His I last name, your chest. last name, what? What about the last names? We both have a Romanian last name that has some religious connotation on top of that. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. But... Looking at his position here, I know he's had a rough couple of games today. We've seen him lose two games every time we've looked at his positions, actually. But I like his bishop pair here. I think he's going to be able to grab an extra pawn, even if he has the double ones. Weird set of bishops, but uh, definitely got good control over the important squares. B7 is hanging. And so the question is, if you if you lose B7 for black... Do you think you're going to get enough on the queen side with rook a4, rook c4, or do you want to defend the, the pawn? Because, you know, taking on a4 might not be so good. Um, your doorbell rang, didn't it? Yeah, not for me, though, as, as usual. Yeah, I don't, I don't have many friends either. I also oh. don't have a doorbell. My friends have to call me, and then I have oh, to okay. get them. City life! <laughs> it's okay. So. You're my friend, right? Yeah, you like it. Yes. Yes. So, rook c4, rook b7. I think white is. I don't know. I want to say slightly worse because of the bishops and probably will lose the a pawn. I was going to say either much worse or slightly worse. I don't actually think that white is. 
Yeah, it's Bishop on e8. Whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, you get you get to a point in your sentences, and you're just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the players figure out the position. No, I, so. I mean, I agree with you. That pawn's probably gonna fall. Bishop pair is nice. Um, so we can come back to this game. We haven't checked out Hikaru Mamidaro. That is quite the matchup. So I think we should do that. Okay, let's go there. One well, Nom Nom Factor and GM Bartek Drew. So Hikaru is very chess. Yeah, we've got Bishop D two on the board. Is Hikaru still playing blindfolded? No, he's not. He said, you know what, Mami Diaro, I think I will look at the pieces for this matchup. Rook A5, interesting. So I guess if Shaq plays, Bishop takes... Okay, so he plays Rook G3 first. F3? F three. Oh, there's just rook f five. There's just rook f five. I thought I thought f three bishop takes d two f two, but there's just rook f five. That's silly. Okay. So, um, is there any way that black can try to promote his pawn without white being able to defend? Probably not. Does he want to trade bishops here? What good would that do him? No, he wants to keep his. Oh, nice, nice tactical, nice tactic there. He's trading the bishop off on his terms so that he can yes. put pressure on b two. I really like that. Um, cool, cool. Rook Hyper e2. Moon is asking about tips for people who are trying to learn some basics quickly. Well, if you go to chess.com, um, they have some really helpful basics. I don't know if it's a command in this chat, but that's very helpful usually. And you could also check out John Bartholomew's videos on YouTube. He's playing in the Pro Chess League on Minnesota. Highly recommended. Speaking of which... Where are you at, Finns? Whoa, Finns uh, down in exchange but attacking. Jaimo okay. is playing the Wi-Fi gambit again. Well, he doesn't even have to worry because Jaimo is probably going to lose on time anyway. Exactly. Although he does seem to have a decisive kingside attack. Is it yeah. a coincidence that she disconnects every single time that she gets a bad position? Uh, it makes sense. Then you blame the Wi-Fi, not the game. After knight g5, I don't see how black is going to be protecting the h7 pawn. Lucky for her, it's her turn to move here. So maybe she can figure something out, but this looks pretty scary. Yeah, I don't... What does black play here? Like, knight g5 is coming, right? So Yeah, rook f8, rook f7 looks like a desperate way to at least not get checkmated. Then you would lose your yes. rook, and then you'd lose h7, and... That would be terrible. Okay, so let's not do that. Yeah, I, I'm actually incredibly confused. Like... H5? Well, H5 is never good enough because there's always Queen G5 and G6 is under pressure. Queen H6 is coming, so... Um, I... I mean, I just don't know. Like, what... Like what? Yeah, what do you do here? So, what if you offer a trade of Queens... This seems okay. like the most forcing move, queen a4, because you can't play knight g5, right? So you play queen h6. But then how do you stop? Oh, maybe queen g4, knight g5, queen h5, and you're just in time. Wait, wait, after queen a4, what about, you're saying... Queen h6. Yes, okay, good. And then and queen then... g4, and then queen h5. Right. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. That's a really nice way to stop it. It looks ridiculous, but... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Wow, does Jai Mo have this defense? That's really nice. I yeah, she think, spent two and a half minutes, though. I found so. this correctly. She needs to bring her queen in to defend here. Um, offering the trade and then bringing the queen over is really the only piece that's going to help you defend your king side here. So I don't know why she's calculating so long. She's not. It's, it's, the, it's the internet. <laughs> it's okay, actually... so she's Wi-Fi gambiting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, does pawn h3 kick the queen? Yeah, but then queen h5, guys. That's the point. That you're you're trying to bring the queen back to the defense, uh, and you're trying to not get mated. So uh, n now somebody somebody said you can play queen h3 instead of yeah. But the thing about queen h3, uh, that's creative. See, chat, chat. You guys are okay. Then maybe maybe then I can play queen c4 and h5, and I'm not worried about queen takes e6 because I will trade the queens with you. I don't know. I'm going to save this position so that it could be one of those positions you analyze 
when you're trying to study how to defend positions, you know? Yeah, no, it's a great exercise in, in, in defense. Super, yep. super, yep. super important. So, yeah, chat, if you want to take a screenshot of Black's position here and Raymond try to figure Sung. out how you try to defend it, you should do it. Raymond Sung defeats Zoo uh, Zu Jiner. Oh, okay. That's wow. quite a good result. Oops, Holy oops, smokes. Oops. So I have this silly pop-up window open. Ooh, and I can't get rid of it. How did Ju Jiner end up in that bind? Yeah, it looks like Black's play was too good. Uh, the knight, the yeah. So White had this pass pawn, but it, it wasn't enough. Yeah, and and Ju pushed her her pawn to f five pretty early. The king was very. This is one of the games that provides a good example of what can go wrong if you push your kingside pawns very far but you don't get a successful attack yeah uh aha -huh, got it okay so cristobal on the other hand has beaten one of the chengdu players he beats zhu zheng yu and that means the score in the match is 1-1 no 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 excuse me i forgot uh the other matchup that we saw was australia versus dallas okay sorry big mistake on my part uh, Dallas and Minnesota are still... Wow, this is amazing. So Minnesota first plays Chengdu, and then they play Dallas to end things off. That's... I love this division. This division is great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're seeing the top four teams perform very well and having a mini playoff already. So, what is this? This is uh, Wang Yue against uh, Fidel Corrales. I'm looking at this game. Wang Yue with white. It looks like he has a better position. I mean, he's got black in a serious bind, these rooks, the knight on e6, queen b2. But black is defending very well. This is another exercise in defense. Can white win this position? Black has 30 seconds on the clock. And basically no play. I mean, if you're playing black here, you just kind of sit. You go, all right, do your worst. Do your worst. And uh, Blizzard played San Diego in the last round. Okay, I apologize. Then Dallas played Chengdu in the last round. I apologize. It's it's one of the two teams. Thank you, Frank, to the J. Bartholomew wins again. Another win. Okay, so she just lost on time? Yeah. So that's the second or third game she loses because of disconnection. That's crazy. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she disconnects. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. I, I don't know why it keeps happening. It's really bad. Because this is not the first time I've seen her get into Wi-Fi trouble. I would think that the players check this before the game. It must be super frustrating to lose games like that. Yeah, it really sucks. Especially if you have your team cap. If I was team captain, oof, I'd uh, knock some Google Fiber into them, you know? El Taj drew Mikhailovsky in, nice in a nice way. Yeah. Mark Velashvili beat. Yeah, but we ain't we ain't we ain't worried about those matchups. We worried about these matchups. Corrales. Let's see if Corrales can defend. Thing is, once you start, so see, he white played h4, h5, and he made Corrales play h6. So you you now allow the g6 square to be a weakness, and slowly but surely, you put pressure. And yes. a very good way of provoking a weakness. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, B Dog B -dog, CX. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, Hikaru is going to play Daniel Naroditsky blindfolded. That would be crazy. And. Yeah, you guys are right. Australia kangaroos are now wow. ahead of the Chengdu pandas. It's always crazy for me to not see the Chengdu pandas leading the pack because their team is so stacked. Chengdu was first when this started, no? Uh, yes, yes, they yes, were. Yes, they were. They were. They were. They were first place. And I think last had... year, they got second place overall, and they were just killing everybody on their way there. Very close final match as well. People saying Zhang Sarana. Okay, we can pop in there. What are we watching here? This is an end game where White is up two pawns. I'm not so sure yep. what you guys want here. 96 looks this like is... it's. It was oh 96 didn't work as of Queen takes F2. Okay. Yeah. But this is almost one, and then we could go to the Sarana game. It's, it's so it's so tough to defend this. I mean, he's probably gonna play F3. He can play at some moment. He can go for your idea, but he needs to play pawn F3 so that Queen F2 is not possible. So, but it's still queen takes f3 with check in that situation. Well, yeah, no, but with the queen on e4, like a queen defending the pawn, so you would play ah, f3, move okay, the knight, yes, then... yes, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, guys, remember the playoff seating, it, it's not like the most important thing in the world. Uh, the only thing that you get as a benefit is you get draw odds, and okay, I mean, if your match finishes 8 8, yeah, it's it, it is obviously a very nice advantage to have, yeah. but. How many matches in the in the league ended with a tie? 
right? So a lot of these teams have decisive results. Minnesota drew a couple matches, so I guess for them it, it's very important. But uh, Right. No, Minnesota has drawn a lot of games, so if they're leading the pack, that's going to be a huge advantage for them given what we've seen so far. I, I think 8-8. Eight, eight. Queen e6, nice. Because um, if queen takes, knight takes. Are you winning the g-pawn or does rook f7 just... Rook g7, rook g6, or rook g7. Um, this also works, but you could just grab the pawn here. Okay, so so, so Greg escapes. makes a point. Yeah, okay. So Wang Yue is going to just clean grind this endgame, I'm guessing. So... Greg just made a point that last year neither of the final four teams would have made it without draw odds, which which is which is important. Uh, I, I was just meaning from the perspective of the regular season. I, I do wonder though, why is that? Why, you know, if you look at like four weeks of playtime in like a regular season, five weeks of playtime in regular season, why do draws happen so infrequently? Is it just because when the best play the best that that's what happens? Can you play rookie seven? Okay, you can just play this. Uh, are we going to see a mate or a free piece? I like free pieces Should and mates. Uh, okay, beautiful. It's over. Let's quickly run to Anton's game since this one is over. Anton and Conrad. So, anyway, uh, very nice game. Anton, and what is this? This game has been crazy from start to finish. This is everything that you need in a second to last round matchup. You need complex positions. Time pressure, excitement, drama, soap opera, crying, screaming. And um. everything here. Um, so Conrad is trying to go grab that pawn on h6. This looks like it's most likely to oh, end in a draw, okay? Because black is blocking both of white's pawns from trying to promote. White is going to do his best to try to grab the h6 pawn because then with an extra h pawn he has increased chances for a win but with these perpetual it doesn't seem like he's going to break through yeah the knight on g4 is like really awkwardly placed but does the job because if yeah he, oh g hold on was g4 just good there i i don't know h6 is wait, taken wait he won it he got the pawn very got nice it. Yeah. play by conrad um knight f3 Okay, it's it's progress. It's progress. Slow but steady. Knight of five? Check. You want to trade off here. This is great. Wow. Um, somebody Very... in the test.com chat just said, Alexandra, tell your dad I say hi. Okay. Tell him I... my name is Kalia. You probably shouldn't read those things out loud, but fine. It was just so shocking. I needed to share it with somebody, okay? I'm very confused. Why didn't White just play G6? Am I, am I crazy? Okay. Back to the game here. Um, she's so black. Black can hold a draw here. Rook H four. Whoa! Oh, he can't take because of G eight. Okay, okay. Now he got the extra pawn. He's gonna sack the rook. Life is good. Um, no point trying for a win because he just keeps his bishop close to his king. And then, yeah, okay. Thank you. We're going to see a draw. Win the draw. Now, yep, he takes. And <laughs> what do we have? Uh, we are going to get that half point in. Dallas will bump themselves to 13. Kangaroos 15 and a half. And in the last round... Well, it's a hunt for first, but more than anything else, I guess it's a hunt for draw odds. So when this result goes in, there it is. Now we have a clear picture. What is going on? Minnesota, 216 and a half points. In the last round, they play a relegated team, uh, I believe, right? They're playing, they're, I, I think they are. And the big matchup, Dallas, Chengdu. Isn't this... Wait, Greg said last year Chengdu beat Dallas in the playoffs, right? Yep. yep. And if here Chengdu we are. Um, here we are. Is Anton actually a kid? No, I think he's 18. He just has his picture there from when he was younger. It's terrific. Uh, Levy, I, I, Levy looks like Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, I wonder. That's an original thought. Oof, oof, there, there's, to there's totally not a chess.com emote completely devoted to this doppelganger. I get so many of them, but at least mine are pretty decent. 
I get like Remy Malik. I get anyway. Uh, yeah, Wingardium Remy Leviosa. Malik. Actually, you do look like him. Did you just win an Oscar for your performance? You should have. Uh, an Oscar as your performance for an all amazing. All right. I I don't know about all that, but Jeffrey Zhang, baby. Here we go. Bob trying to cut me off in the middle of giving you a compliment for, for gosh. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. We're fine. Sorry. By okay. the way, guys, after round seven, we have an interview with John Bartholomew. Woo! Levy, why are you spilling the beans like that? It was a surprise. Come on, uh -huh. Levy. Do something sorry. right. Do something right. <laughs> anyway, what is John Bartholomew's score? Um, he's been doing really well. Maybe Did we show the scores already? I think we were just there. Yes, we can do the board by board scores once again. Here we go, friends. After six rounds, this is the last round. On board one, Mamidyarov and Sarana have held it down with four out of six. Board two, we got also four out of six top scores, Cristobal and Viktor Mikhailovsky. Board three, Andrew Tang with four and a half out of six. I think he had four and a half out of five, so he actually lost the last round. And yeah. on board four, uh, Andrew Tang. John Bartholomew. Lost a game. He's also doing very well, though. John Bartholomew, wow. the man who has the most points out of six games. It's almost iconic. We knew. We knew. The man uh, of the hour. Very yeah. impressive. <laughs> also, quick shout out to the devs and the graphics team of chess.com because you guys have put together so much beautiful content for this show, and yeah. uh, we can't thank you enough. So We appreciate it. Especially that Levy Harry Potter emote. What Wait, a nice one. Alexandra, what is this position? What what are we what are we even looking at? Are what? you looking at Jeffrey and Wang Yue? Oh I saw this. Uh my uh uh somebody played this just now against Eric Hansen. Oh, Azarov, New York Marshals player, played this line where you it looks like you lose the the the, the bishop on b five and then take back on d four. <laughs> It looks and... like they're almost taking notes from uh, each other's games. Yeah, in, in that game, yup, queen d3, queen g3, it's actually pretty interesting. Then you play like knight d2, knight f3, knight d4, and um, and then white just has like a nice bind, more space, can play f4, f5. Azarov was doing really well against Eric Hansen, and this position is really tough to play with black, but then Azarov basically had to sacrifice a piece, didn't do it, and just... Lost. Whoa, we got an easy early draw between um, Michael Brown and Fidel Corrales. Oh, Corrales I, just offered a draw. So, so let's see. We know that Minnesota Blizzard does really well with draws. We know that John Bartholomew is probably going to win again like he does every Battle Royale. So I guess a draw is a pretty decent result for them given how that they're now five... Because I, I actually that was the didn't finish yet. So. No, I think that's a really ridiculous decision. I mean, he was white. Yeah, but look at the gap between them and Dallas Destiny. They just want to do better for them, right? Oh, they just want you're first right. Place. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I didn't realize. I for yeah. some reason quickly I thought that Dallas was in second, but yep, yeah. you're right. That actually does make sense. Because before there was a five, they were Dallas Destiny was five points away from them, so it seems like Dallas Destiny can't catch up. No, 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 no. I I disagree. I think Chad is is you know saying ah let them fight. Thing is, if you've clinched first and you've dominated, you, I think you're allowed to make a draw. Like. Look, there there has to be some exceptions. You know, it's if it's like winner take all and you make a draw, that's kind of I don't know, Alexander. You might you might no, disagree. No, but... no, no. I think you you get the win and once you've got that locked in the bag, you can do whatever you want. So Yeah, it's uh you know, it's it look, if if you have seven out of eight in a tournament and in the last round you clinch first with the draw and you take it in ten moves, like, look, you did your part. You know, you fought the whole time. So, although Minnesota had some gifts, didn't they get two, they got one or two time wins? At least two. A mouse slip. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everything right. was, um... Yeah, guys, okay. twitch.tv slash GM Hikaru. All right, so let, let's see. Well, it's Hikaru and Daniel Naroditsky, so this is going to be quite the matchup. I think it was yesterday where... Um, Daniel Naroditsky and Hikaru Nakamura, they were both playing in Arena Kings. Daniel was super excited because he was in first place with some... What, what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, no, the, 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 the timeout in the chat by three different people. <laughs> wow. Mod roulette. 
Sorry. Chat, you don't see the lines that mods do. I'm cracking up right now. Whoa! What is this? What is Wang Yue doing? He just castled Queenside. There's just so much going on at the same time. Hikaru's playing Daniel blindfolded after just taking away his victory in the Arena Kings last time. Daniel wants is in for blood. Wang Yue is doing crazy stuff. The chats are playing Russian Relay. I... Alexandra, uh, how's your how's your headache? Uh, do you, does your head feel better? A little bit, actually. Yes, yes. Levy Chat. and I both had terrible headaches before yeah. we started commentary, and we were complaining to each other about it. But we're yeah. good now. We basically we, we got on the call to prepare for commentary, and uh, this is a great thing to talk about with huge playoff implication matchup. But anyway, we're just gonna. So we were like, dude, our head is killing. I had to take I had to take an Advil, and you know what, Chat? Same. These games, the energy all night. These shows have been awesome. This is week 10. We have two more shows. That's that's really it. We have the round of 16 and the round of uh, the round of 8. And then after that, there's a break of about a month until May. So you guys you guys have really held it down this year. Pro Chess League is always fun. It always kind of picks up slowly and then boom, it starts getting exciting right around this time. So Exactly. Uh, and Levy was also doing commentary on the New York Marshals before. So Over at um, Gotham Chess. Well, yeah, so Seattle Sluggers can't catch up to the SF Mechanics. It's totally fine to do Blindfold now anyways. Um, he's having fun. He's entertaining the, the chess community. That's what we're here for. So Jeffrey, your man, he looks like he has another strong game here. Whoops. I just clicked on a gigantic window to take me to an opening explorer. Yeah, Knight C4 is curious. Basically, chat, you can't take because I win your queen, so don't do that. Uh, and Jeffrey also would like to put the knight on d6, maybe go queen. What about on b6 and like a rook on a1 going for some type of checkmate? Okay, that's, you know, dreaming far away, but that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Something knight b6, takes, takes, yeah. put something in the a file. Yo, Walser95, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, thank you so much. David Alahin, Andrea, British Andrea isn't here, but next time why would wang yue allow knight d6 i mean couldn't he have played bishop c5 check okay i mean now jeffrey's just crushing i think with this with this whole idea of getting the pawn to d6 jeffrey basically can't lose the game anymore so first battle royale commentary today was robert hess and anna rudolph the core four commentary team for the year is usually uh danny wrench with either alexandra or anna and then it's usually robert hess with either alexandra or anna so it's 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 a the core four you know, it's it's beautiful, and um, that's my compliment. Are you happy? Yeah. With hey, with I... occasional guests that have different colored hair, or yeah, that's pretty much it. It was Amon. I was a special guest. David Pruess was a special guest. It, that and, is um, true. All right, let's. I don't, I don't like this. B four. Can you play B four here? Rook A1 or B4. Oh my gosh. Is B4 just winning? I, I really like this move. B4. And now if C B4, Rook A1. If Queen takes B4, Rook A1 and Rook B1 like this. This looks terrifying. I'm 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 just saying. He plays Bishop G3. He's not he's not as aggressive as I am. Uh, this is a beautiful game. Okay, and, solid. Uh, <laughs> are we running out of words to say there? <laughs> No, sorry. People are still asking about my dad in chess.com chat chats, so I just closed it off. Um, okay. And we're back. Uh, let's I move around. Board two. Board two. Board two matchup. Thank you. Let's look at the board two matchup. There's a knight on g3, Alexandra. What is this? Is this is this winning? Is this losing? Is this a draw? Knight what is on this? Knight on g3. So obviously, h takes g3 doesn't work because the rook is hanging. F takes G3, gets met by F2. That's a really nice move, I think. Oh, Knight G3 is sick. Oh, and speaking of one of the greatest commentators and chess personalities of all time, Robert Hess is in the chat. GM Hess. You know, I gotta say, Robert Hess fits into the VIP club of people who have GM before their, you know, their, their last name or first name, and he's actually a GM. Yes. So, yo, Sam Copeland. Sam. Whoa, Rook G one. Why didn't he play F G? F G and then King E two looked scary, but wait, Rook G one. 
Oh, okay. Queen, oh, I thought he was mating himself. Yeah. No, no, he's not mating himself. He's trying to threaten H takes G3, but after Queen takes H2, what's he going to do with that rook? So Queen H2, rook G3? Okay, rook G3, and then Queen we H... got to follow with Queen H1. Bishop F1, Bishop A6 looks like a natural move. Yep. And then there's no way to protect that bishop. You just have to make space for your king. So no. maybe bishop e3. No, but bishop b4. I mean, this just what is the, what are we even analyzing? <laughs> I don't is... know. We're just blocking the bishops and we're trying to play the get mated in as few moves in as many moves as possible. But the game. I don't. I, I have actually no idea what. The, okay, so he must have overlooked. I mean, fg is the natural move. Just take the piece, right? So if you play f2. Mm -hmm. King f1, it doesn't make it any sense uh, to play this because queen h3, king e2, but where's the win? Queen takes g4 is at least a draw, right? Because king f1 and you repeat, can you play queen g2 is the idea because now you're threatening to promote. If white plays something, oh, this is the move. Now if anything goes to f1, you have queen f3 mate because you take away the kings. That's disgusting. Wow. He must have seen this in panics, but he must have missed that in this position, you can play king e3, and it's just a draw. Because it's, it's so unnatural to think of a move like that, right? It's ridiculous. Queen g5, and I mean, you're just going back, queen h5, and, and you go king f1, no, so you play back to e3. I mean, this is, this is, this is, that's so king hard to play. E3. Yeah, how could you miss king e3? You see it in all the games all the time, right? But, no, 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 but, no, but, look, I get, I get it. But how could you not see bishop a6? Right? Because, like, you, you block the check. I mean... I mean, it's possible he thought he was he was lost and he panicked. But you're right. I don't know. It was it was a very tough position to defend. And Conrad I, played it extremely well. I just don't know. Like, this is kind of inexcusable. Like, how do you miss... Okay, you get bishop f1 and what? You stop calculating? I mean, look. I, I, I understand it's much easier to be a commentator. But... That's true. He must have just thought he was losing everywhere. He must have overlooked the move king e3. But. Yeah, I okay. think that's probably what happened. Weird. I mean, he, he probably looked at that line, thought he was getting mated, and saw no other option, so he just went for it. That makes sense. Um, that makes sense. He probably just didn't see king e3 at all and figured that he was losing anyway, so this was the best way to go about it. But, uh. I mean, if he thought he was lost anyway, that kind of makes sense, but... Oh, Alexandra, queen d3, king e1, queen e3, f e, f2 is not mate. Oh, I thought f2 was going to be mate, but can you go f1 knight? Wait, 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 is that, is that... He's doing it! Puzzle rush! Wait a second. And f1, yeah, f2, f1, that's amazing. Sorry, I just got really hyped. It's okay, I, I couldn't really make out what you were saying in those last couple of seconds. It started, it sounded like squeaking, and I think my headphones just gave out. Um, at the change in volume, but it was very exciting. So I'm glad you. Oh, did. oh goodness! And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, F1 night, Sam, Sam Copeland, where you is, baby? Sam Copeland, if King C2, you just take this. I mean, this is so unnecessary. But Sam, get in here. Look at this, Ma. You just took over Robert's role. Oh my gosh. 0125 moves in the last round. Conrad Holt for vice president. Jeffrey Zhang for president. All I have to say. Yep. But Minnesota we're, still gets first. We're, seat. we're electing more Texans. Let's do it. Very nice, you guys. Um, oh, gosh. That was an incredible attack. That was sick. That was amazing. That was great last round play. That oh, last man. round play just re energized Levy. So. I'm, I'm getting a burger after this. You know, this one thing that's amazing about New York, you hungry at 3 a.m.? That deli over there is going to make you a five-course meal. And that's what's going on after this stream. Anybody want to come? Feel I would free. like to come. I'll meet you after the rounds. That's that's going to take too long because we don't live. Sorry, I'm going to just go and eat. Okay, he just uninvited me, you know, first, uh, whatever. Okay. You're Rob. <laughs> Rob. Burgers? 3 a.m. burgers? Uh, <laughs> My name is Sam, and I dozed off with my headset off. Had a heart attack, thinking someone broke into my apartment, <laughs> calling me. I <laughs> Twitch user Sam Marino. That's hilarious. My man I'm fell sorry. asleep and got Sam. Oh, what? 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 Who's in my house? <laughs> oh man. Oh. This okay. Is great.
Um, let's see. What other crazy matchups do we have between our uh, top four teams here? Well, Dallas is – excuse me, Minnesota is getting a freebie round as they are – Playing be- – okay, don't call the San Diego the freebie. That's a little savage even for you. Well, they're not the freebie. They're, they're flat out the worst team in pro chess league history. <laughs> ma, ma, you hear what you hear? What this what this weird head dude said about my team, ma? Okay. I I just got some more coffee after that one, honestly. <laughs> they're um. Apparently, but, they're in well. They're in fourth place in the battle royale, Greg. That that is a good point. They are not doing so badly. In the battle royale, the pandas are doing pretty terribly, actually. Not just yeah. pretty terribly. The pandas are doing terribly in the battle royale. They're used to being first. Yeah. This is actually very, very surprising from Chengdu. But look, everybody has a bad week. New York finished in seventh once, and New York has never lost in any competition ever. Ever. So, uh, it's pretty... Oh, yeah, actually, the Turtles this year are really the heartbreak team. After a Cinderella story to make the quarterfinals last year to fly out to San Fran and... Yeah, um, that was that was definitely pretty sad for them. Um, so the, there's another kind of crazy-looking game between Panda Zero and Jinbo Jinbo. So Dallas Destiny versus Chengdu Panda, since we're looking at them. Um, so Black has most of his pieces on the 8th rank, on the 7th rank. Um, white bishops are slightly more developed. There is a pawn on d3 under attack from the knight. Pretty crazy position, trying to take it all in. I can't tell who's better here. Yeah, probably if you boot up the engine in one of these positions, it very confidently blurts out three zeros at you and just goes, I don't care, okay? Like, really, figure stop it bothering out, me. Figure yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, queen f1, and it, it makes it so difficult to play this position. The thing about playing a position like this with two, three minutes on the clock, relatively high tension situation, right? I mean, Dallas Chengdu, Chengdu not having a good Royale, but playoff seedings, you know, really... I don't want to say up for grabs in this match, because Chengdu can't actually storm back, but, per se. But, but uh, Chengdu can be overtaken by the Australia Kangaroos. Yes, so they, they are fighting. Be careful, yeah. They're fighting... <laughs> I hope Chengdu finds a dependable, dependable Wi-Fi cafe for the postseason. Um, yeah, well, and yeah. Actually, go ahead. Alexandra, does it matter if you finish in third or fourth? I understand that if you finish in third and you win your matchup, then you have home advantage or you have the advantage of draw odds against the fourth place team. But for that to happen, that would mean that both underdogs have to win, right? Right. So. Like, I mean, I'm thinking of this correctly. If I'm a third place team, it's basically like being a fourth place team. I mean, I suppose that you would prefer to be third place, but for you to get draw odds as a third place team in the quarterfinals, you would need to upset and then the team. Oh, okay. St. Louis versus Minnesota. Cool. <laughs> you you keep bringing something up. You're like, I, I yeah, keep, this is really. Yeah, I keep. Tr- yeah. Greg is like, yo, Levy, this is happening. X, yeah. Y, and Z, and you're like, oh, okay, thanks. Greg. All right, Gre- listen. This is why he's the commissioner, and I'm on here talking about chess and making accents and yelling Sam really loud. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. Chess now. All Both right. Both players have invested a minute and only made two moves. Very scary. Yeah. Um. What is going on with that pawn? on on a5 i would not take it as white because then c5 is hanging i don't even know what i would try to do as white here other than trying to get my rook on the open file and get confused by how complicated the position is and try to trade off pieces i don't know i don't know and this is again one of these situations where we let the players figure it out yep and let's go to hikaru's game because he's still blindfolded apparently and I just got there. His king mm-hmm. is in the center of the board, Levy. And uh, Daniel has the bishop pair and no issues on his clock. Well, I mean, it, if you can't beat Hikaru when he's not looking at the board... Well, I thought you were about to do a Hikaru impression with the way you started that sentence. No, 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 no. Uh, after today, I, I don't really want to do a Hikaru impression. I think I think I usually do it when he's, uh, when he's performing, you know, at his highest level. But... He, I mean, blindfold odds is 
with 10 minutes on the clock is really enormous. So, yeah, uh, especially against GM. So I agree here. Um, Bishop F4. OK, that's a free pawn after queen takes D5, right? Yeah. D3 is also hanging, but then you get F7. C5 is also hanging. He just has so many hanging pawns here and will end up with his king in the center. So he's definitely in trouble here. Oh, Lady a... six is a fork, but rook takes d5. King e7. I mean, yeah, this is this is just completely winning for white. Uh, Jeffrey and his opponent. Jeffrey has a very good end game. That's my evaluation, my professional evaluation. If white just plays a rook to f2, I think he should be winning, but maybe black can hold. But it's it's so not easy. my only, I guess White's king is not actually tr uh, tied to the b five pawn. Um, it's weird because like Black doesn't even have any pawns, right? It's rook and two versus bishop and two. White's pawns are doubled, but mm -hmm. Black's bishop is stuck defending two pawns. So I, I don't know. It does feel vaguely winning. But what is Dallas playing for? Dallas can't even make the top seed, right? So. Well, they're they're playing to instill fear into the hearts and minds of their future opponents. So they're going to try and beat them up. G4 here. He's just trying to make some progress with his pawns. Um, Wang Yu as bishop is already ideally placed on c4 because it protects b5, it's protected, it's helping f7, so black's king is probably going to want to stick on the king side for now to not let white get any pass blocks. Chad is saying think... that Dallas can get top seed, but I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't it, I, mathematically, Dallas can't he... even get past Australia, theoretically, right? Because... I don't know. Let's 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 leave it to let's leave it to the players. Anton Smirnov did do his part though. He beat Safar Lee, which is very impressive. And Australia has Momentine. Oh, Momentine is just lost. Momentine lost against the board four of the hackers. Wow. That is not clutch. Not clutch. And Bartholomew is uh dead. Oh, he's winning. I thought he was white. <laughs> so are you looking back at Bartholomew's position? Yes, Bartholomew is just winning with the black pieces, I think. Uh, why don't we hop to that, That actually, I'm sorry to keep jumping around, but that game between Jinbo, Jinbo, and Panda yep. Zero. Okay, cool, I'm, whoa. It's well, mate, mate, black wins. Wow, Dallas gets Jinbo, another Jinbo point. Won. Wow, Jaimo has not had a good event today. No. <laughs> no, we got some Wi-Fi gambits and some uh, checkmate gambits. So yes. let's go to Jeffrey. How about Jeffrey's endgame? Yeah, let's let's move on from this one. Has Jeffrey made any progress? Yep, he's gotten his king closer towards Black's um, towards his own pawns, where he's trying to make the pawn break. Black is being very defensive here. He's still protecting the b5 pawn with his bishop while also trying to stop white from making any progress on the king side. And if white's not able to make any progress, then it's just going to be a draw. Yep. Um, g6. I was looking at g6, but after f takes g... Okay, he just played it. f takes g6, then you have king g5, and you can't win the pawn back on g6 because it gets defended by the bishop on d3. Yeah, so he's given up this pawn to change the f pawn to a g pawn, and I guess he's gonna use the side checks to get the king all the way back. But it, I don't know. It doesn't seem. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, we're we're seeing. Does he want to try to go for a mate? King f six. No, he's putting first pressure on the bishop, trying to separate the bishop from protecting both of his pawns. But I. Don't think he's going to be able to win one of the pawns. Maybe he can get some back rank hooligan mate going on. Black, go get yourself out of checkmate. Go, go, go. Wait, he just blundered checkmate. I just told you, get out of checkmate, not into checkmate. Wow, ah! Jeffrey wins. Unbelievable. Well, yes, because of Bishop F3. Are you kidding me? 
That's that's crazy. Maybe he was lost. Maybe he was lost anyway. That's... Oh, okay. I see. Because of Bishop King E eight, he had rookie two pinning his bishop. I mean, that's just bonkers to to not see that. That's that's ridiculous. I'm just saying, maybe he was lost anyway. But to fall immediately is pretty sad. Yeah, he. Uh... Okay. That's that's crazy. Uh, and Hikaru and Daniel have started a three-minute game. <laughs> yeah, I, I just saw it as well. That's so hilarious. Hikaru lost that game. Okay, that's that's really funny. Uh... Okay. So. We now have three games left. Minnesota Blizzards, 18.5. No, two, two, two. Hikaru doesn't count. I also counted Hikaru. I was like, yeah, three games left. Oh, no, oh, no, right. no. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we have two games <laughs> left. Um, that one was just open. I was counting the light squares. Which one, So we have the game between uh, SF Mechanics and Sluggers. They're not really going to affect anything. And Minnesota and San Diego, even if Minnesota loses this, they're still winning the Battle Royale. So congratulations for them. Yeah, uh, and those of you that don't know, we're going to be interviewing John Bartholomew as a preview for the playoffs. Going to have a little That's talk a with him. That's a surprise! Okay, okay. I think I think the cat's at the bag at this point. Uh Talk to John about how you know he performed today and what we can expect, obviously without giving away too much intel, whether he'll be in the lineup, uh, how they feel with all their underrated kind of not underrated, but like young players that are very good at this quick format and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh stick around, guys. So we just gonna watch Cristobal Enriquez cap off a, a fantastic another fantastic, you know, run for the Minnesota Blizzard and yeah, yep. we can getting talk a... one more win in there. Interviewing John Bartholomew, that is the excitement we want to see. Elfins, Greg, you as well. You rage quit. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We're all very excited to get him in here. If you have any questions you would like us to ask him, put it in chat. I'll save some yeah. of them on a notepad and uh, hopefully get to at least a couple of them. So let us know what your questions are. I love John. I could talk to him for like an hour, but he's probably tired and... Oh, this is very fancy. B2, take my knight, king b4, and and uh, yeah, the pawn promotes. Yep, he didn't even have to make a bridge. His king cannot get checked. So when this game ends, guys, we're going to summarize the scores once again. Take you back. There we go. There's the win. Scores are going to be updated. 19 and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pacific Division of the Pro Chess League has now come to an end of the regular season. Let's take stock of everything. Pretty funny. The bottom four did not change. Very, very interesting. So let's take us to the big score bracket. Hey, coffee, uh, man. All right. Jeffrey Zhang, my guy. Sarana, Mamidyarov, time for first on board one. Board two, Enriquez really held it down for Minnesota. Another top score from Minnesota, four and a half. And Bartholomew, Alexandra, when three of your four players win the board prize, I think it's going to be a good day, right? And Minnesota... Yeah, that's an understatement. They... Yeah. <sighs> just kill the battle royales uh minnesota blizzard does have a reputation for that so they came here and they showed off their skills as they usually do yeah just a great job by minnesota overtaking chengdu chengdu drops from first to third so they lose their uh draw odds but okay i mean they lose their permanent draw odds and they will only potentially have it with a win, but we have three 200-point scoring teams. Australia ended up with 198, very close to 200. Uh, friends, we didn't have any movement in the bottom four, and it looks like Seattle is and San Diego are going to have to fight, live to fight another day. But stick around. We're going to take a quick break, get John Bartholomew on the show, talk to him a little bit, and uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Bye, guys. Take care so, for it. Don't leave minutes. yet. Don't, don't go leave. anywhere.
And we're back with the man of the hour, Mr. John Bartholomew, YouTube legend. I mean, and you know hey what? Guys. Celebrity. Celebrity is above legend. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> John, it's great to have you on. And the, the question I asked you, you know, when we were cropping your face and everything was, uh, you agreed to an interview not after the game, right? In, in NBA or things like that. People are, go, oh, well, you know, let's interview the star player. We didn't know you were going to be the star player of today. So <laughs> how did you prepare mentally for potentially not having a great day? And yeah, I think now. just the abruptness of this interview, chess.com asked me like last night if I wanted to do this interview. So I didn't have too much time to think about it. And even if I went 0 for 7, I was going to appear no matter what. JB is a good sport. Um, and Minnesota Blizzards always do really well in the Battle Royale format. What strategy do you guys have going into the playoffs? Uh, that's a good question because our lineups have been different in the Battle Royale versus. Uh, the actual matches. So I think that'll be up to Patrick Tang, our manager. I, even if I had something to give away, I, I don't know what our strategy is going to be, but we have a pretty robust lineup. Actually, we've been using a ton of different players. Okay. So I think we feel quite good in a lot of different lineups going into the playoffs. Yeah. I was going to say having you on board four is like, I mean, it's, it's, it's great, you know, on paper, but obviously everybody has to perform. And I would say that I think today the stat was that your board two, three, and four all scored the most in their score group. Uh, okay. I guess my question would be, you know, we we the, today we saw a Royale. You've got to prepare for a whole variety of opponents. Could you talk a little bit about how the preparation goes when you have to prepare for six players, excuse me, seven players versus four, <laughs> right? Like in one team of various strengths. Well, full disclosure, I did not prepare at all for this. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't okay. prepare for the last one either. <laughs> Okay, interesting. I literally just looked at the Google document and saw who I was playing right before the match started. But honestly, that's been a strategy I've been using lately. Uh, not over preparing, not trying to like burden myself mentally. I mean, these games are so fast, 10 plus two. I think it's honestly about whether you're feeling it on a given day. And in the past, I have tried to prepare for matches. And I, I definitely would if the stakes were, you know, like in the playoffs, if I get inserted in the lineup, certainly I'm going to prepare. But I think the battle royale is a little bit different, like time management, uh, yeah, making sure your calculation just holistically is good. I think those are more important factors. People oftentimes don't even play the openings that you're going to prep for. So I think it's better just going with a clear head. And which team would you say you guys had the hardest time playing against? Uh, today or just overall in the league? Today and in the league. Uh, I think um, in our division, the Chengdu Pandas are always tough. Uh, they would have been my, my preseason pick to win it all. Uh, with with us in the playoffs, I gotta I gotta push back against that pick, but I think they are always difficult. Uh, so yeah, like that's that's a tough squad to match up with. I have a question, actually, not even me. Uh, Cash Menke has a question, who just cheered a hundred bits. This is this is beautiful. Cash Menke. I don't, yeah, because I don't know anything about the NFL. Uh, many people are saying, you know, let's read this really dramatically. Many people are saying that the Minnesota Blizzard are much like the Minnesota Vikings. Strong regular seasons, but unable to finish the job. Just Does that comparison put a chip on your shoulder? Total choke in the playoffs. Uh, no, I think, we, I think we have a chance to be the most successful pro franchise in Minnesota sports history. I will say that. I mean, we've okay. had some long-suffering fans here in the state with... Uh, not only the Vikings, but also the Minnesota Timberwolves, like perennially disappointing team, uh, made it to the first round of the playoffs last year for, in a really long time. But no, I think I think we have the chance to be uh, the most successful franchise ever in the wow. entire state. Let's well, get it. This is a lot of Old talk. Um, but going into the playoffs, you mentioned that you you weren't preparing before the games. What are what are the Minnesota Blizzards going to do to make sure they're giving it their best shot? That is a good question. Well, I can tell you we have a very active WhatsApp group where <laughs> everyone just gets in the chat and just fires each other up on match day and throughout the week. So we have a ton of support here in the state, in our community. And yeah, as far as preparations, uh, again, I, I don't know that I can really reveal a whole lot. There has been stuff here and there like, hey, such and such person plays this opening, check it out. But no, it's been pretty basic and it's mostly about the team spirit feeding off each other's energy. Uh, we, we've got guys like Andrew Tang, who I think has played every single match for us this season, and he performed well tonight. Uh, we have a, a few very key free agent signings. Uh, we have one guy who really stands out is Thomas Beardston. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this Dutch, like, assassin IM who just made one of his uh, GM norms, by the way, recently. 
Uh, Brandon Jacobson, another free agent who just made a GM norm. Which From New York. I think he played in a tournament you played in, right, Levy? Yeah, he he beat me basically to clinch his GM norm, and now he's playing for Minnesota. So that's that's beautiful. It's a great yeah, story. So, so we're tapping the free agent. But even though we're a small market state, people will still play for us. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to dole out massive contracts like they do uh, with the Vikings and whatnot. <laughs> do you have a resident, uh, like like a person on the team who's kind of like uh, – the source of memes or the source of hype? Is there any one person in particular? Because uh, the yeah. Marshalls have one. so Definitely Patrick Tang. So Andrew okay. Tang's father. He's our manager. He is very on top of... He always knows the standings in the division. Like he just knows the standings off the top of his head. And like I said, that WhatsApp group, he's he's usually the catalyst for the energy on uh, match day and in, in preparation for the matches. Awesome. I, have, I have a few questions that have nothing to do with the playoffs. More like chess and... Playing yeah. in general, Alexandra. I don't know if, if, if you want to if you have a more specific one, but uh, uh there was one from BJH thirteen, a mod BGH, in our chat, and he wanted to know more about your streaming schedule. When can we see more John <laughs> Bartholomew? <laughs> yeah, my streaming schedule has been very haphazard. I was on vacation in Mexico uh, a couple weeks ago, so that definitely interrupted it. It's it's very ad hoc. I got to say that I. I haven't committed to a schedule yet. If I can ever do that, I mean, I try to hit the big events. I have tried to hit like title Tuesday and arena Kings and stuff like that. I've wanted to stream pro chess league, but I don't think I have a right to yet. I'm not uh, Hikaru territory where I can just easily talk about my games and like avoid time pressure. Like I get in bad time pressure anyways, when I'm streaming. So it'd just be much worse. And especially the last two battle Royales, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with the results I've had. So <laughs> that's, that's fair. That is fair. I think I think the person we had on uh, in the Atlantic uh, coverage was also also a streamer. I think John is John is a very 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 good candidate to have for this interview. Well, my my question I was going to jump to actually, Alexandra, I'll 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 leave the the chess piece question to you. Um, I was going to ask yeah. John, do you do anything in particular? Like, do you do you treat any of these PCL days like you mark it on the calendar? It's kind of having like a like a match or a game in a tournament? Do you like eat a different way? Do you do anything differently? No, I, or you just Honestly, all I do is I load up on my, uh, yep, my steadfast the... Starbucks coffee. You know, this, this is my fourth Starbucks tall ice coffee of the day. Uh, if you have a gold card at Starbucks, you can get free refills. Just a hot tip for you guys. Oh, that's so, amazing. I'm going to get on that. Morning, I, I got up super early today cause I had a lot of stuff to do today. I had a few lessons and, um, so work on my site chessable. So did that and yeah, I've just been like drilling the iced coffee all day. I made sure that there was one in the refrigerator for the past few hours. I unleashed it, I think after game five in the battle, no, after game four in the battle royale today, I subsisted on tea before then, but yeah, it's just straight caffeine for me. That's how I get through. <laughs> all right. And um, Greg Shahadi is asking, what do you think of the fact that Hikaru was playing some of these games blindfolded? Uh, he was having a lot of fun with them today. I thought Greg was going to ask a different question, like why I played the Scandinavian and have good results against him in the Scandinavian. Uh, That's also a good shout question. Out, shout out to Greg. You want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we were talking about that a little bit in our WhatsApp group because uh, one of the guys on our team. This WhatsApp group sounds lit, honestly. I yeah, think yeah. I added, by the way, if like the Marshals get eliminated, I will totally plug the Blizzard. But yeah, we, we would love that, Levy. We would love that. But sorry, go ahead. Um, but yeah, we were talking about that because one of our, our players mentioned like, hey, Hikaru played the first 12 moves of the game blindfolded uh, against Fidel Corrales. So yeah, I, I don't think that's a great thing to do, right? I mean, even if they're out of contention, the sluggers, it sends a poor message, I think. I think you should treat it professionally. It is the pro chess league. And, you know, it's just like, if you want to compare it to pro sports, mm -hmm. uh, you know, LeBron is taking some heat right now with the Lakers because they're going to miss the playoffs, and it looks like he's dogging it on defense, and he's not giving the kind of effort that you would expect from one of the best players in the league and potentially one of the all-time greats. So you know, I think Hikaru should, should step up and at least try to set an example for the other players. Also, he lost that game to Corrales. So I think Corrales played like the game of his life. I think he just like... Yeah, played a great Fidel game. played really well. He said he was pretty happy about that. Yeah, I saw we, we would tune into the game right as Hikaru got his piece trapped and someone in chat said he, he had choice words for himself. Um, well, I, yeah, and I, I get it. Like people get tilted and stuff. Uh, and then again, they might not have been playing for a whole lot. But still, I, I think it's better to just do your best. Even if you're streaming, just try to treat it as professionally as possible.
John, before we we let you go, uh, can you can you show us the chess piece in the background? How, what, oh, is yeah, it life size? Absolutely. Is it life size? And those who have watched my videos have seen this piece before, but <laughs> I'll get it for you guys. Yes, this is the quality we content we come here for. Yeah, so get some this hype. Is a, um, I don't know how much of this you guys can see, but this is actually a trophy. It's pretty large, but not overly so. The perspective definitely skews it a little bit. That is huge. Uh, yeah, question a, for chat. Would you rather have that piece or be a part of this WhatsApp group? Both amazing things. Let us know what you would want more. Gotta be WhatsApp. My my mom, WhatsApp is crazy. My mom got added to an all Russian poet, like amateur poet thing. And people write poetry about like the kitchen. It's crazy. And she's like, how do I leave? I had to teach my mom how to leave a WhatsApp group. She wasn't even in, like, she didn't even want to get into. So, uh, yeah, I gotta say, I haven't used it very much. Uh, if not for the blizzard, I don't know that I'd be using it really at all, but it's it's pretty lit, as you guys said. Yes. So if there's any diehard Minnesota Blizzard fans out there, we might be able to get you into the WhatsApp group. Okay, chat, you heard it here first. <laughs> now they're going to be excited. Uh, chat so. is saying the piece was smaller than they expected. I had the same reaction when I saw it as well. But yeah, yeah. John, thanks for being here with us. I guess I had I do have one more question before we let you go. Um, yeah, absolutely. We talked a lot of uh, we talked a lot about chess, but you're also a human outside of the chess you do. What's something human, surprising? Robot, just to yeah, confirm. <laughs> Thanks. There's, yeah. there's been some some talk that I'm a robot, not a bazooka right. zorker or anything like that. No, th we we already have ro Robo Hess. That's enough. Robo Hess. But yeah. <laughs> one surprising thing about you uh, that's not chess related. One surprising thing about me that's not chess related. Um, hmm. Uh, fun fact, I've torn both my ACLs playing basketball on two separate, two separate incidents. One when I was 18 and the other when I was 23. That makes sense why you play a more passive sport now. Yeah. 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 And the one that I tore when I was 18, it was my senior year of high school. And of course, like being the chess guy, like everyone knows me for chess. I was just messing around at a park with my friends, tore my ACL. I had to endure a solid month of people making jokes about like, Hey, how did you tear your ACL playing chess? Like, how does that happen? Oh, it's <laughs> I mean, funny now, yeah. but it was, it was sad then I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I just have a comment about that and then, and then we'll sign off for good. But I, I had a rule for my, my, my younger students in chess camp. It's like, guys, you can't come to chess camp and come home with an injury. That just doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> like if, if you're going to fall, just, we'll put a band aid on it. Don't even cry. Just, you can't get hurt in chess camp, you know? So Right. I, I, well, I tuned in briefly earlier in the broadcast in between games. And you guys were talking about how your goal for your students' levy uh, was not to have them eat pieces. Is that right? That's <laughs> vaguely accurate, yes. <laughs> for now, for now. We just won the state championship, so those are the better kids. But, uh, nice. yeah, we well, we didn't win the, the overall under 1,000, baby. We start in small, but the other half, we're still working not to eat the pieces. Um, That's a solid goal. All right, we're bad at goodbyes like Anna Rudolph, who also did commentary earlier. This has been great. This whole coverage, honestly, today was amazing. There was a lot of great, uh, great challenges and uh, ultimately Minnesota Blizzard triumph again in a battle royale and on a 10-week season. Chat, we're, we're going to send you we're guys. We're pumped for the playoffs. We're pumped for the playoffs. Tune in. Yeah. Tomorrow, there's the highlight show. And then on Thursday, it's the Eastern and Central Divisions. And we wrap things up. We're signing off, guys. Take care. See you well, tomorrow, and then for the official coverage on Thursday. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for being here. Levy, John, the yeah, mods. Thanks, Alexandra. Thanks, Levy. Thanks, chat. Appreciate it. Greg, of course. Bye, guys. Thanks, Greg.